works today. I reconnected it, so cross my fingers here. Uh, we have that. All right, let's get started. So uh, we're going to be talking about face tools today. So uh, in order to get face tools up and running, well, first, let's go ahead and just look at an overview of what uh, face tools is. So I'm going to go to the Real Illusion Hub. Let's go ahead and launch that. Um, you know, obviously have Character Creator installed, open that up, and then ZBrush Face Tools installed, open that up. You can click, I think, let's go to this home page here. And this will open up Face Tools. Uh, at least, you know, here's the landing page for Face Tools. Uh, here's gives you an overview, and we're gonna watch an overview video on this. We'll just, I'll just kind of talk over it, and that'll kind of give you an overview of what Face Tools is, how it relates to CC, how it relates to ZBrush, and then I'm going to go in and just kind of do a quick um, walkthrough of like a hyper real character based on a character from CC and then a stylized character based on a neutral base body. Um, doing good, thank you. Obviously, and also let me know, <laughs> if, make sure that all my audio and stuff is working too. Uh, I'll keep an eyeball on the channel. I'm probably not going to be as chatty in the channel as I usually am, but um, we'll, we're good. It'll be good. So, uh, so let's see if we go to the uh, buy page. You have the it's fifty percent off right now. Also, here's the indie. So instead of three hundred, it's one hundred and fifty. And then here's the um, enterprise. And I have to say, after using this, here, here's the other thing too. I'm not an expert at this. I've done it three times, three, four times, uh, three times through. And I'll take it, I, you know, the first thing I did was go to headshot, take my own scanned head uh, and then run it through this and then kind of got a feel for how it worked. And then I made the vampire character, which, uh, where would that be at? Um, I guess, I guess LinkedIn. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, let's see here. Go to my LinkedIn page here. So basically, uh, you know, sculpting this character, going through the process, taking a, a base head and CC and then updating it to a vampire. So this is what we're gonna be doing for the hyper real stuff. And then I also have a stylized head, which again, just starting from the neutral base and doing a stylized character. So we'll walk through that. And also learning that, um, you know, when it comes to, the cost of a plugin versus the time it spends for you to do this type of work, the, how fast it goes to say, hey, I can go from a character, I can do all these facial expression shapes, it'll deconstruct those back for me, it'll bake all my normal map wrinkles, it'll mask out where those go, it'll, um, God, all the things that it does that we're gonna cover, that stuff takes so long, is so difficult to wrangle, is so much data usually that you have to manually do and you know set keys and uh, set the expression data and left and right deconstructed shapes and making sure your shapes don't overlap so you don't get double transforms and all the things that go into setting up a pipeline for this. Like if you're doing this, even, even if you're a character artist who's like, hey, uh, I just wanna do something really cool. I wanna make a, uh, you know, I wanna make a head, but instead of having it just sit there and then I have to sculpt in an expression, take a screenshot and then put it in my art station, I wanna make a character and I wanna figure out how it emotes, um, what I, how I need to model in order for it to emote effectively downstream to downstream apartment. So even if it's not part of your pipeline, it's still a really good tool. So as I say, grab the indie and just use it to be understand and learn um, how to model effectively uh, and also how to change the expressions and change the shapes so you get a really good outcome and breathe life into your characters. As opposed to, again, just having them static, beauty render, and that's all you, you can do with that character. Um, super powerful. But even from a production standpoint, if you do use this as part of your backbone for an actual pipeline, oh my god. It's like having an awesome tech rigging team they set up this cool tool that you can, you know, here's the rules how to use it. You know, here's how you don't break it. Here's how all the organizational things go. And then it's up capped and then it's it's pretty rock solid. It's pretty robust, you know. So having a tool like this in a, in a production studio, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of salary and time and man hours and into the millions, I'm sure, 
And here we just get to kind of play with it and use it as an organizational backbone. So I don't know, really exciting, especially if you're a character artist who wants to play around with, the, with expression. So hmm. cool. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, looks like we're up and running. So, OK, we'll get started. Uh, like I said before, once you have Character Creator, go ahead and install that. ZBrush Face Tools, go ahead and install that. All you got to do is do the drop down or click, click the install. Uh, here and then click open and then let's go ahead and really quickly just watch the overview video YouTube so I'm gonna go to the real illusion page here's a three minute video here so we're going to be doing this. Basically, we're going to start from a CC character creator base mesh that has a very, uh, you know, it's it's basically topology, and that topology has a vertex order. So it's made up of polygons, right? And those the verts in between, <laughs> all the verts put together have a vertex order. Uh, so as long as we maintain that vertex order and maintain our naming, there's a whole bunch of really powerful stuff we can do. Even if you want to start with a, an arbitrary base, it's like, well, I've already got something sculpted. You know, how do I how do I take advantage of this? Then it's just a matter of wrapping uh, their topology to your topology, projecting um, projecting the data from your sculpt to their to their topology, and then boom, you're all set up and you're ready to go. So uh, this is going to be starting from a CC mesh just because it's way easier. Um, but you can have an arbitrary mesh, especially if you have an arbitrary mesh, like a head sculpt, that you can use their headshot tool. So I'm gonna have videos on this, uh, this process, headshot uh, process, and then also on my YouTube here, I do have, so here's my Real Illusion Character Creator ZBrush. This is if you have an arbitrary ZBrush sculpt and you wanna just have it pose and animate. It won't have facial animation, but it, you can animate and have cloth simulation, and then you can send that back and forth from character creator to, um, I guess I don't have the sizzle video in here. You can just basically go from character or ZBrush to character creator and back uh, with an arbitrary mesh. Uh, this live stream right here using a, so I'll go ahead and link you while I'm talking about this, so we'll say, here is this playlist and I'll keep dropping links in the channel while we go through. And then this live stream right here, the using a character creator neutral base for a custom mesh. This is where, um, I'll go ahead and link y'all to this one too. Let's see, share, copy, here, here, and I think we've got a sizzle video. We can kind of watch an overview on this seven minutes, yes. So. Basically, starting from a neutral base body, you know, go into ZBrush, start sculpting it up, go ahead and detail it out. Uh, and in fact, this process right here fits beautifully with what we're about to do. So if you're following along and you're like, I would highly suggest starting with this live stream video. And again, I'm gonna have the actual breakdown video soon. I just have to sit down and record them. I did a ZBrush workshop where we went over this entire process. I just gotta sit down and record it. So I got all the information, it should go pretty fast. So anyway, CC base body to ZBrush, detail up the base body, let me just click through here. Um, there is a Substance Painter Bridge button in Character Creator. It's basically this button right here that says Substance Painter. You have a character loaded in, you go, you send your high risk sculpt back to Character Creator, you hit this ZBrush Painter plugin, it'll send everything to Painter, you can bake your high risk detail texture it up, send all of that back to uh, all the UDIMs that Character Creator sends over, we'll be brought back into uh, Character Creator, and then we made a character. So start with that, this whole beginning process right here in the live stream. If you start with that and then hop into Face Tools, not only will you have a totally custom character, right, like this guy, you can go in and fix, not fix, but update or change any of his facial shapes as well as any of the expression wrinkles along with those shapes. And with that whole pipeline, you could have a whole character in a day that is to the high, as high fidelity as you want, as much time as you want to spend getting it to that point. So uh, super, super cool. So that's another really good resource Pre prior to heading into face tools. Check that video out, get used to using the base topology, making a full character, and then hop into this video where uh, we'll, we'll get a little bit more in depth into 
you know, just the face stuff. So instead of body and animation, it'll just be face and face wrinkles. Um, well, is there a way to export the rig into other software like 3D Studio Max or Maya? Yes, in fact, uh, in fact, you can export the, you can actually, once you have your character, you can hit a button and go right into Blender, right into Unreal, right into, um, I don't know, like CC, if you just go in here to file. And again, I'm not an expert in this. I haven't done it yet. So this is all just, you know, me trying to remember off the top of my head. So here's the universal scene definition, USD Omniverse, you know, so it's the USD file format. You can go Z, of course. Uh, that's that's an automatic bridge to ZBrush. Here's FBX. So you export, export an FBX and that's everything. Um, and then OBJ send to iClone. And then there is more, where is that at? It's up here. So down here, FBX, all characters, USD, render. And then, oh, I guess I should bring up the real illusion. So here we have character creator and there's a, a MetaHuman live link, Omniverse connector, Unreal auto setup, Blender auto setup, Unity auto setup. Uh, same thing if, and you know what? We may even do this too. At the very end, if I got enough time and I don't get too chatty, um, you can go you know, into iClone and then we can have our face be applied to our character in real time or have it auto link to Unreal so we can have you know, your character in Unreal real time, I can have an iPhone looking at my face and then I can, you know, replace my little head down here in the corner uh, with a character that I have. So that's, you know what, we may, we may actually do that today. Um, uh, I think the, I believe the indie version will do everything I'm doing. Uh, cool. Yeah, Twitch, I can't get set up. I tried this morning. I don't know what the hell's up with uh, restreaming Twitch. I don't, I really don't know. <laughs> uh, head on over to YouTube, I guess. Um, cool. All right, I'm going to get started. So let's head on back. So before we get into face tools, I want to talk about uh, what your base mesh is, what the facial shapes are that drive the facial expressions for the low res geo, and then what expression wrinkles are and then they're going to tell you what skin gen is and then we're going to start uh, with face tools so if you're just joining us you know like hey i want to get to the face tools part look at the chapter descriptions that'll that'll be where uh, i'll link you directly when that we actually start using face tools so the first thing we're going to do is we have uh character creator 4 open i'm going to go over here to load neutral base try to stay hydrated <laughs> Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, how to get proper lip sync webcam driven programs. Uh, there is an iClone. You can use video or a wet or just web video and then it'll, it'll work. I, again, I haven't used that yet. So, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that at the very end. So content scene over here. So here's the content tab where we can go through and grab cool stuff, which we will later. Here's the scene tab underneath character. Here's our CC3 base plus uh, character, and this has our tongue, body, eye, teeth, um, eye occlusion, and tear. So I'm just gonna have this top group basically selected while I do most of this. Um, let's go over here to the material tab, and we'll just, so I'm gonna go from the base, CC base, grab all of these, and that automatically selects my base color. I'm gonna drop that strength down, and we'll drop this diffuse color down, and we'll just talk about just the shapes. Oops, let's see here. There we go. Just the shapes, just the wrinkles, you know, just a neutral uh, character here. So when we send this over to face tools, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be updating three things. We're going to be updating the base geometry and we can do all of that in ZBrush if we want to. We can send this right now over to ZBrush using, uh, there's three ways to do that. With a character loaded, we have face tools activated up here. So we can click this button, that'll send it to face tools. You can go in here to plugins, uh, ZBrush face tools, face tools. You can go from this modify uh, attribute tab over here and you can scroll down and there's a face tools button. So right away, you can just send this neutral face into face tools and just modify it however you want. Before we do that, we can also modify the base while we're in here in uh, Character Creator. Uh, easy, one easy way to do, well, 
you can always go through here and uh, you know, for example, you select the body, you can go in here and say edit mesh and that'll go into vertex mode, face mode, edge mode, and you can do selections and just move stuff around. Uh, we're going to go up here, again, just having this top character node selected, our character group, and we're gonna go over here to this icon, this little squishy squeeze icon, which is morphs. So I can update my character uh, using this. So here is all of the morphs available for an actor, and there's a lot of them, right? It's a little overwhelming. However, we can look at just the body morphs, and then we can go through here and just look at the body, and everything underneath this right, the arrow drop down right here contains all the pieces of the body. So if I just scroll down a little bit, I can go through here and I can say, um, we can do character scale, we can do body tone. So if I want to make it a little more toned, a little more, um, you know, a little more cardio, <laughs> we can take that body uh, tone slider up. Uh, we can make it even skinnier. You can go in here, here's a male thin. We can go through here and thin it out. Uh, again, all sorts of things you can do in here. You can go in uh, piece by piece. So if we go here to the head, uh, here's all the head options available to us. So if you want to turn it into Kevin's head or Caleb's head, or you can go down here to a little bit more generic. These things may not come with vanilla CC. Uh, these options right here, uh, this might this might be a content uh, morph actor, actor morph content thing, wrinkle essentials. So there are packs you can buy. However, you have the whole, you have the power to, if you have CC and ZBrush, you have the power to do everything I'm doing here, you can absolutely just do in ZBrush. Uh, but boy, isn't it nice to be able to go through here and quickly uh, go through here and do like, here's a, an old old male head on a body and uh, we can go into the arm and say we can do, you know, here's strong arms and uh, thin arms and you can change the armpit width, all these little micro changes. Uh, if you do make a change, you can see now we're at 50, now we're at negative 50. Uh, you can double click the title and it'll go from the it'll go from one extreme to zero to the other extreme and just kind of toggle between those. Uh, if you've done a lot of this and you're like, oh, what what the hell am I using? There's all sorts of sliders I've used and I want to go back and adjust some, but I forgot what I used. Go up, you know, if you scroll down here, scroll to the very top, go to currently used and you'll see, okay, we have these two sliders here. Um, and there we go. Now, another cool way to use morphs is you can go in here and turn on this morph button. So instead of being over here, kind of digging through menus, you can literally just go in here and say, hey, I want to make the head bigger, head smaller, neck longer, ears bigger, uh, more turned out. Go in here and change the nose shape and the brow depth and the chin, you know, give them a weak chin or a strong chin. Uh, you can fatten up these forearms or thin them out. Uh, you can make the arms longer, shorter. You can make the hands bigger. You can just click and drag. And this is all part of that, you know, that live stream that I showed you at the very beginning. You can do this, send this over using um, just Go Z back and forth. Here's a little Go Z button for ZBrush. Update this body however you'd like, and then detail it out. And then, like I said, you can come back in here and you can bake it in Painter if you want to. And then you can use Face Tools. So this is how you can just kind of update a base character to get started with. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the face. So that's how we update the base character. Uh, and that is something we're gonna update also using face tools. We can, this is a cool start for our base, but we're gonna go and we're gonna make some um, really big changes. Oh, another thing too, if you're ever, you know, I wanna change something on the hand. Well, you can just, or the ears. You can just click on the ear and start playing with it. It's like, well, I wanna make elf ears, uh, but I, this morph isn't allowing me to. Well, it'll put you in the ear section. So now you can just drop it open here. And if you want to just narrow the search down for scale, just start typing in scale. Here's all of your scale, ear scale options. Uh, and then you can get rid of this search term by clicking the X. We can scroll all the way down. Now we've got like ear elf, ear elf long. So you can go through here and do in this, this, again, this may not be part of the vanilla package, but if you want to make elf ears, you don't need a morph. It's just nice to have. You can do elf ears in ZBrush. It's not a huge deal. You're not really missing out on anything that's not going to be a blocker if you don't have the packs you can just do it but it's just a like, quality of life thing if you want to get those content packs so uh here we have our character so let's talk about we've talked about base shapes um now we'll talk about facial shapes which is when this character animates there's a low res subdivision so if we go in here to scene 
and look at our base body here. I'm gonna do this drop down here and we'll look at the wireframe. So this right here is our subdivision level one basically in ZBrush. When we move these verts around, these are our base shapes. So these are the, the lowest resolution base by, uh, facial deformations that are, that are gonna happen uh, for our expressions. They're not, they don't contain wrinkles. You know, there's not enough verts in here to have real wrinkle data along with this base shape. That's gonna be baked in later. These are purely just face shapes. So let's go back here to normal. And how do we uh, look at those? So let's see, facial shapes. I'm just going through my list right here to make sure I don't skip anything. Cause I wanna give you all the information. It lets set you up and running before I go through, you know, in a, in a month and do the actual step-by-step -step recording. So I apologize in advance, uh, but hopefully this will get you started. So uh, edit facial. So how we can look at our facial shapes is we can go back to this. And so here we are in morphs, kind of changing the morph for the base head. Uh, back here, we have the, uh, you know, these are AccuRig and Edit Mesh and collision shapes and stuff we're not gonna get into. But here in the Motion tab, uh, there's a couple things we can do. We can import animation. You can also just drag and drop animation on here. It's very drag and drop friendly. And we have Edit Facial and the Facial Profile Editor. So first I'm gonna go in here to Edit Facial and we'll just kind of look at what this face can do. Uh, we have this, uh, by default we're set under Muscle. We have Expressions and then Modify tab in here. Uh, we also have these options here. So if you hover over these, you see head orientation, head tilting, and head move. So you can actually have these on while you're doing expressions. So if I grab this, so I'm going to tap here and then tap here. That grabs those two muscle groups. And then as I move this, it's going to move the head around and kind of raise his eyes up and down. Um, I don't really need, I'll see, reset to zero. I don't need his head moving while I'm doing facial expressions, so I'll just turn those off. And now if I do this, you'll see, hey, we got eyes brows up and eyebrows down. Um, what else? We could grab this jaw. We'll go ahead and turn these off by clicking. We can also double click to turn everything off and then grab the jaw here. You can open this up. So these are our shapes and this is what's going to control. So here he's kind of wrinkling his eye. Um, let's go ahead and reset the zero. Uh, ears, basically here's upper eyelid. You can grab both these and kind of close them. Um, you can open them really wide. So this is just how the face moves. Uh, also, you can go in here to expression and there's dialed in expression. So here's happy expressions, uh, very happy. You can go through here and change <laughs> the, the expressiveness. So up to 150 if you want to. Uh, and then you can use this drop down. We can go down here from happy to disgust. And then you can go through here and change these. These are all the kind of presets in here. Uh, and then you have modify. So if you want to go through here shape by shape, you can go through, here's all the shapes you can control. So for example, jaw opens an easy one. You can go in here and change jaw open. Um, however, you might be thinking, well, how do I edit these shapes? Um, this is just kind of moving the face around. So we'll go ahead and say reset to zero. We'll close this out. And then we'll go into the, uh, instead of edit facial, we'll go down here to the facial profile editor. This is another really super powerful, uh, nicely organized thing. Let me just make it, I'm not trying to dock this here. There we go. I just want you to see it. Um, so I'm going to go in here to edit expressions. And I'm not going to go super heavy into this. If you want to watch a tutorial on how to use this, I'll go ahead and link you here. But this will show you how to modify these. I'll give you a really quick overview, but uh, this will be better for you. So let me just here. So now, uh, for example, if I'm just going to go here. Brow, brow raise inner, left, right outer left and right, and you're gonna see, so if I can go through here, I can say, hey, here's my brow raise right here, no problem, here's my brow raise inner. If I do this little link icon right here, that'll turn these green ones on, and then all of these are part of my brow raise expression. If I wanna edit these, I have some really cool options in here, and this is all part of CC. This isn't part of a plugin, this is just CC functionality, character creator functionality. When I say CC, I mean character creator. So let's say I want to edit brow raise, not just brow raise inner left, and right and outer left and outer right, but all four of these at once. They're all linked expressions. You can do them individually. You can also do them all at once. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, down here under the expression tools with these activated, you can go down here and you can say edit mesh. So you can hop into edit mesh. And if you just want to move some verts around, go in here to vertex, grab some verts. You can turn on soft selection, change the radius, and you can just go in and literally just move verts around. Um, you can mirror copy, uh, smooth, all sorts of grow and shrink your selection, all that good stuff. So pretty easy to go through here and edit your mesh. We'll just click out of that. 
Uh, another one is, and we'll use this one. So we, again, we have our brow raise here. Let's say we want to use our morphs to enhance or change this. We can open the modify morph button here. We'll just click that. And then over here, that would um, put us into uh, the expressions dropdown. And then we can just say, uh, where are we at? Actor, ex head, expressions, brow. Uh, and then we can do tweaks, inner, outers, compresses, and drops. So I think under tweaks, we have height, left, and right here. So if I want to say, hey, this left brow up is pretty good, but I really want to crank it up. You can crank up left, you can crank up right, and say, uh, you can go here, inner left, inner right. You can keep going, you can go nuts. I mean, you can go through here and use these morphs to modify the shapes, over crank the shapes as well. Um, if you're happy with this, Let's see if I remember how to do this. So I've made some changes. I want to head back over here. I think if I click this little electricity icon, we can do a quick update. Uh, right now, it'll do just the quick update for the inner raise left, but I can also say, hey, split part. I want you to do all the morph changes I've done and re -de deconstruct it back to all my individual shapes. Hit OK. That will update the shapes for your facial profile editor in here. So this will the new 100 value for all of these will now be this new value I have. So now when I do, you know, these shapes, it'll be more over cranked. Um, also down here while you're messing with these shapes, so we'll go ahead and reset to, let's see, reset all I think here. So now when I say link these, they will be the much higher eyebrow raise because we changed it with our morphs. We've updated these shapes. They've been baked into the corrections here, and let's say, hey, okay, great. These these expressions are great. Oh, but I want to tweak them, but I don't want to use vertex. I don't want to use morphs. Right here, you can go through and you can say, go Z. You can send this expression over to ZBrush, do all your sculpting and vert moving in ZBrush, go Z it back. It'll update in here, exact same process, quick update, change my shapes, and you're good to go. Um, what else we got in here? Proportion. You can also go in here and click on proportion, and that will give you bones in here. So if you ever want to move teeth or tongue or eyeballs around, you can change where those uh, bones end up moving those objects for those expressions too. So, and remember, these are not wrinkles. So let's go back in here to our motion here. We'll say edit facial and we'll, um, you know, just drop this down to muscle. So uh, when we have this these selected here and we move the eyebrows up see how there's no wrinkles going on um that's because and you know what this is we don't need to look at a great character let's go ahead and look at some color again so i'm gonna all these materials selected for my digital human we're going to scroll let me see here here grab all my bases color we're gonna take that strength back up because we're gonna talk a little bit about uh wrinkles and how the color works too so we'll switch this back up to white there we go so there's no diffuse overlay color. Incidentally, if you did want to change the skin tone, um, you can scroll down. If, for example, we just select the head skin tone, that'll actually control the tone on the body. You can scroll down here to skin color, uh, color adjustment or blend map. You can activate skin color, uh, activate, activate color adjustment. Uh, then you can go through here and you can change the tone of your skin on the fly. So pretty cool. But anyway, back to wrinkle expression. So right now, like we were saying, if I go back to my motion and say edit facial and we're moving, moving our face around, you're going to see when I go up, there's no wrinkles happening. It's just that base sub D1 moving verts around for your shapes. So we have your base head, which is what your head looks like. We have our shapes, which is where those low res sub D1 verts are going. Uh, and then we have on top of that wrinkle expression. So as those verts, as those expressions are firing off, you know, when, when the program says, hey, as these brows start going up, start kicking in a little normal map up here. We don't have geometry, uh, enough geometry to put wrinkles in here, but we can say, hey, as like a set driven, as this drives, as the brows up shape goes up, blend in this baked normal map that'll that'll make this look more realistic basically so how do we see those we're going to go over here to our reactivate wrinkle settings uh we'll say activate expression wrinkles we'll say give it a second so what this is doing is applying a neutral wrinkle set so if i go in here to content and we say actor expression wrinkles there's wrinkle essentials down here there's realistic and stylized 
Uh, we'll use both today. Uh, and just in this base set here, you're gonna see, oh, there's a neutral wrinkle set. You can drag and drop this on your character. It'll do the exact same thing as what I just did. I'm also gonna check on check with expression. So while we move our head around, it will go through. And now when I raise this head up, you'll get little wrinkles built in. That is being driven by a, a diffuse normal roughness wrinkle set map that's being driven uh, there. Now we can change, swap these wrinkles out. Uh, for example, uh, right here in this upper left-hand corner, you'll see here's a little double stack icon and a little single stacked icon. If you right click these and go to uh, content info and we scroll down, you'll see this double stacked version is a wrinkle type of general live. That means those wrinkles are live. This one by contrast, if we go into contrast uh, here, uh, wrinkle type is individual flattened. We'll talk a little bit about that. So essentially uh, I have this here and if I scroll down, you're gonna see I have a bunch of options available to me. We have strength. So here's the overall strength of the wrinkle when the eyebrows go up. Here's the AO amount. Here's the redness. So if you want a little uh, skin reddening, uh, you know, blood pooling as your wrinkles go, that'll go ahead, you can change it here. And also the uh, overall normal strength of what's being baked in. Also the speed at which it appears. So if you really want them to kick in fast, you know, crank the speed up. If you want it, if you want those shapes to move quite a bit before the wrinkles come in, then you can change that on the fly as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty good, right? So if I go back here, <laughs> I'm just trying to be clear. So as I go back here and we start playing around, it's like, oh, as again, as we start moving this up, watch those wrinkles just kind of fade in there. That's a texture that we're going to be making uh, and baking out bespoke totally um, exactly what we want. As we bring it down, these these wrinkles right here start kicking in. Uh, as we bring these lids up, the wrinkles in the corners, of the, this one's pretty subtle. Uh, what else? What's another good wrinkle? Uh, maybe a sneer in here. Yeah, like these lines, these can be both shape and wrinkle. You know, this is probably a lot of the shape geo moving around. Um, but... And let's see, can we move the head back? Let me see, just turn this on, double click. So I don't use this a ton. So as we move this back to the neck, as the head moves, the neck will tighten and you'll start getting some platysma to show up. So all of this stuff uh, will end up, you know, doing. So now here's the other thing too. You can go through and you can change these individual expression wrinkles in Photoshop. You can hit, you know, click on the normal and go in here and say, hey, I wanna edit this in Photoshop, it'll throw it over and then you can do Photoshop editing. Um, also, uh, so if, for example, if we wanna use Kevin's on here or Camilla's on here, we can say, hey, give me Camilla's wrinkles and just drop them on. That will give me her wrinkles. So the wrinkles are gonna update slightly here. So if I go back here and we say, um, you know, see, see these wrinkles are Camilla's wrinkles. And with Camilla's wrinkles, because she, had wrinkles that were, um, what's it called? It was the, let me see, info, content info. It was the, it was live. It was the wrinkle, live wrinkle type. Awesome, thank you. Um, it has, you know, AO and redness isn't baked in. And if we scroll down, you're gonna see there's no images down here. We can go in, so this is another thing too, when we go into face tools, we can do generic wrinkles that we can use on any character, or we can do super specific individualized baked down wrinkles. If we apply Kevin's wrinkles, for example, so here's Kevin's wrinkles. Uh, his stuff is all baked in. This is These were wrinkles for Kevin, really nice wrinkles. And in fact, I'm gonna take advantage of that in just a second. We're about to head in the face tools, everybody. Um, calm down. Um, so here's, uh, you know, as we go through and make this shape, it'll update here. However, this is even a smart enough system. If we want to go, hey, we were individualized, but I want to make this more generic for my character so I can make more adjustments. I can literally just hit the generalized button and it'll turn these into a generalized wrinkle. Um, again, super powerful, a lot of really cool stuff you can do. I'm not an expert in this just yet, but... That's kind of the basic overview. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, base, facial shapes, facial profile, expression wrinkles. Let me see, I look like I got a link here. If you want to get started with wrinkles, here's a quick overview of how this works. Uh, and you know what, we'll just kind of click through here because there's some really cool stuff. 
Uh, oh, also stylized wrinkles. We'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to do stylized at the very end. We're going to do hyper real first, and then we'll do a stylized character at the end. So here's expression wrinkles. Basically just everything we talked about. Redness. Um, speed. Yeah. So it's kind of a good overview. And oh, another thing too is skin gen. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of detailing and poly painting and ZBrush just because that's fun. Uh, you can also use a skin gen. So let's go ahead and just reset the neutral here. If we uh, go into this uh, right here, we can say activate editor, um, texture settings, uh, yes. Um, you can go in and you can texture with pore details and skin color and scars and, you know, paint. You know, you, you saw everything that they were doing in that video. All of that you can use to texture your character in here in layers non-destructively, like Photoshop, basically. Go in here and change your skin base, and here's a bunch of skin base settings and all sorts of stuff, and you can start layering in uh, makeup and outfits and all sorts of cool stuff in here, and you can add more layers and blah, 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 merge layers and et cetera. So this is another option for you. So we'll hop, hop out of Activate Editor here, and I think we're getting close to... Um, just going in and doing face tools. So overview video, did we even, I don't think we looked, watched all the way through that. So let's go ahead and look at that real quick. So face tools, we're going to be starting with the neutral base mesh, sending it to ZBrush, doing all of our base changes, like changing the way the character looks overall, changing our facial shapes, which is the low res subdivision one geometry of where the verts go during each expression, and then changing the wrinkles wrinkle maps to be exactly what we want. Um, and here you can see this right here. It, you know when you go into 1024 and you see all these cool expressions, you can use those for reference. You can also use this tool to go through and actually take all of those expressions to the base body head that's been, that you can bake with face tools. You can project the detail and the poly paint from the scan data to your CC topology in ZBrush. You can bake all those out with the press of a button and now you'll have a scan data head with all the shapes built in, animating, talking, performant, redness, AO, all that stuff in the press of a button so you can take your scan data and just do that. And you can do hyper real characters, you can do stylized characters. Um, face topology, yes, yes, yes. Yep, kind of go back and forth. You can update the teeth and the eyes uh, subtools if you want, create unique expressions, uh, again, stylized characters if you want, same topology, um, and instead of doing like realistic human wrinkles, you can do these types of like chiseled wrinkles. They have the different wrinkle presets, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, and then you can go in here and then hit a button. Oh, you can also do like this. Instead of just wrinkles in normal maps, you can go through here and draw on your wrinkles so that you get that, um, into the Spider-Verse look. You know, as the faces move around, you can add a tune shader along with your expression wrinkles which are gonna drive in a normal map detail and ink detail will fade in during the expression. Uh, here's the here's what I was talking about as far as projecting, you know, scan data um, for a, a scan face. And now you've got your scan data being driven by you know, all the platysma down here. So cool stuff, right? I think it's really cool. So let's, <laughs> let's start over. Let's start forever. We're heading into face tools. First thing I'm going to do, we'll launch ZBrush, preferences, go Z, clear my cache files. We're starting fresh. Uh, I'm going to go to my real illusion hub here. We're going to launch character creator. And again, I'm, I apologize in advance for the chat. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff, so I'm not going to be answering a ton of questions. Um, so I apologize. So if I skip something or I miss something, more likely, I apologize. Um, cool. How'd you create a volumetric phone type mesh in ZBrush? So in ZBrush, I have no clue. However, interestingly enough, under the ZBrush Cinema 4D section, here's how I created volumetric foam and have it animate and bendy and squishy in Cinema 4D using ZBrush and GoZ. So. That's uh, there's a whole playlist for you that might have something in there. Okay, so back here. Um, like I said before, we're going to just start with a. Well, you know what? We're not going to start with a neutral base. We I'm going to kind of I'm going to cheat a little bit. So underneath actor here, let me see all project CC project actor um, character. 
Uh, also, these up here, these are quick quick icons that go through here and navigate these folders. Uh, in here we have Kevin, and uh, this Kevin right here has expression wrinkles, and he has really nice expression wrinkles, so I'm going to take advantage of that. Uh, the neutral base mesh is fine, and if, and if you're a purist and you're like, I don't want any expression wrinkles baked in, I want to just start fresh, and I want to hand make all of my shapes and hand make all of my expression wrinkles, I don't want any help. You can absolutely do that. I'm going to speed this process up a little bit. So I'm going to start with a really nice base here with Kevin. Um, but feel free to, you know, don't, you know, there was a comment on Twitter that was like, I like to do all this stuff by hand because it makes me better. Um, and I totally agree. If you want to start from a sphere and make a character and then make all your, you can absolutely do that. Um, now, as far as the work part goes, if you want to do all of that and then set up all of your, uh, type in all your express, uh, expression data uh, scripts so that you can go through and have your left and right shapes deconstructed and again, don't have any overlapping and then do all the masking, the thousand files you have to keep track of and name and bake manually and send to another program and rig and wait to bones and have all that stuff work. Again, that's 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 the real work. The I mean, it's it's a lot of real, la that's a lot of labor. Um, the work we're going to be doing is the fun part. We're just going to go in and sculpt some shapes, hit a button, it'll do all the work work for us, and we get a new cool character. Uh, there's a couple changes we need to do to Kevin here. Uh, let me make sure I'm set morphs. Send the ZBrush here. Oh, here's another thing I want to bring up too. Uh, well, we'll bring this up in a second. Um, so modify morphs tag. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and change this character. Ke we're gonna make Kevin into like a hyper real vampire creature character guy. So let's go into um, the morphs like we were talking about. Interestingly enough, if we go to currently used, Kevin himself is just a morph. Like he, he, you can morph him back to uh, neutral base body if you want. And then his body, if you wanna take him back to the neutral head, you can. There's Kevin's head. So just in case you were wondering, uh, again, just kind of playing it quick and easy. Go in here, turn on Morse. Uh, we can go through and we can like tilt his nose up and make his lips bigger and drop him, uh, drop the position down. And again, like we were talking about, make the ears bigger, flare them out a little bit. Uh, we're in the ear section. So we'll go in here and we'll do give him a little vampire ear start. We can go in here to head, full head. Uh, we can make his face gaunt uh, or old. So here's old face. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that back to neutral. I think there's a thin face on here that's nice. Yeah, this male thin uh, face. And there's also male thin. I don't know if there's other stuff in here. So we can kind of go through here and kind of use these to our advantage to just kind of start dialing in again what our base is for our character. Um, Characters, character group, edit mesh, mirror copy. Okay, so here's, now, if you start with a neutral base head, you won't have to do this. With Kevin, he's he's from like scan data. He's a real character, he's a real actor, and he is in character creator, you're able to manipulate him. Um, along with real people comes real symmetry issues. Uh, they're not symmetrical. So there's two ways you can fix this. You can fix this now in character creator, and I'll show you how to do that. You can also just send this over and then fix it all in ZBrush. You can mask half, do a smart resim, move the eyeballs into place or make any changes to the eyelashes that you need to. Um, totally doable. In character creator, just select your top, again, top character node. Um, go in here to uh, edit mesh and we can say uh, mirror, our, mirror our verts. So now the left verts are the same as the right verts on the right. Of course, by doing that, we're going to have a little bit of eyeball issues. You'll see his his left and right eye weren't perfectly symmetrical because again, he's a real human. Humans aren't symmetrical. The most beautiful among us maybe, but not most of us, certainly not me after looking at my scan data. Easy to fix though. We can even use morphs for this fix. We can go down here to the head eye ball uh, and then we can go in here and just change the position. So I wanna say eyeball height left is what we're looking for. Yeah, you can just move this eyeball up a little bit and there we go. We're all symmetrical. We're ready to go. And we can now we can sculpt with symmetry on without it having being off in ZBrush. Um, so we're going to go ahead and send this to ZBrush. Uh, it, the first time you do this, so again, have your top character node selected. Uh, we're going to say 
face tools over to ZBrush with the three different places you can do this. Um, the first time you do this, it may prompt you and say, uh, please choose the current version of ZBrush, use the face tools. Whatever your version of ZBrush you want to use as face tools, select it, hit OK. It'll do all the installation for ZBrush for you. Um, so what, is this, what does this menu do? So the first option is create new. We don't have anything open in ZBrush. We haven't previously been working with a character. We're not relinking any data. So if you've done work in Character Creator, you've done work in ZBrush, you shut, you save both your C project and your CC project, you shut everything down. And then a month later, you come back in and you're like, oh, I wanna keep working on that character. Load up your CC project, load up your uh, ZBrush, go Z, uh, ZBrush to CC and then you're relinked and then you can go back and forth and it'll just relink instead of create new. We're creating new. Uh, the level six and 2K texture resolution. So when we go into ZBrush, again, we've already shown you the sub D level one mesh shape that we're moving around. In ZBrush, we're gonna, that's gonna be like an envelope and we're gonna have subdivision level one, two, three, four, five, and six. It's gonna have millions of polygons and that, that millions of polygons for the head is going to translate into about a 2K texture resolution when we're transferring our poly paint back and forth. Um, you can also go to our subdivision level seven and have 4K texture resolution. Now, when I say 4K texture resolution, I don't mean for the whole body. Uh, if you remember back with our uh, character creator here where we are went in and uh, so in this, this playlist right here using character creator for a neutral base, we go through and we sculpt the body and then we send this over to painter. That sends over five UV sets or U dims uh, laid out. So the head texture in this case is going to be 2K. The chest is 2K, the arms are 2K, the legs are 2K, you know? So it's not 2K for the whole character, it's 2K for each section of the character. So we're gonna leave it at level six 2K. Honestly, that's plenty for what I'm gonna be using. Um, but of course, feel free to bump this up. There's also normal details. That's going to take all of his poor detail um, super fine wrinkles, everything that makes him human. It's going to take all of that off and put it in a editable layer in ZBrush, a sculptable editable layer in ZBrush, super useful. Because we don't necessarily want all that detail baked into everything, right? So we'll have that checked on. Um, we're not gonna include uh, wrinkles in poly paint. We're gonna be poly painting our wrinkles. It's gonna be totally awesome, totally fun. I'm gonna leave this unchecked. Uh, and then over here we have all or none or set one, two, three. Now what is set one, set two, set three? You can see down here we have, it's basically one, two, three, four wrinkle sets. They're labeled thusly. Here's wrinkle set one, here's wrinkle set one, two, here's wrinkle set two, and here's wrinkle set three. So what are those? Uh, essentially these are what we're gonna be editing in ZBrush. So instead of sending over you know, 16 or 17 different wrinkle sets, it just sends over four, it sends back and forth four wrinkle sets uh, that get masks and automatically deconstructed back to left and right and where they need to go and what they need to blend with um, very nicely. So here's wrinkle, here's one, one, here's one, two, here's two, and here's three, all the wrinkle sets, if that's interesting to you. Uh, and if I say none, that's going to send over everything without any of the expression wrinkles. So when it, when my when his brow goes up, if I check on all for every expression, the brow rays will move the low res, the sub D1 geo. And then also with this checked on for the expressions, when I brow raise, character creator will bake in ZBrush those normal maps to actual geometry. So you can go in and you can just edit the expressions that are there. Again, if you wanted to hand do all these by hand, say none. Then you don't get any of this information. You can just make it yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and say all because I'm lazy and I wanna just, you know, not do any work. I'm just kidding. I just wanna use this as a base so I can demo quickly and show you, you know, and just kind of update what's already there. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to. So I'm gonna say all, uh, so that's it. That's all, we're, that's all the data we're sending over to ZBrush. So we'll go ahead and hit go Z and that's again going to send everything over to ZBrush and we're going to have a plugin in there that's going to organize and select and show us where we can move and um, sculpt in our wrinkles and paint in our stuff. And I don't know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm just hoping I get, I'm trying to keep an eyeball on all of my notes here so I can make sure I don't miss anything because I want to make sure I give you all the information. So we're sending everything over. Face tools, 
Okay, yeah. We're all caught up. Cool. Okay, I'll look over here real quick. Um, is this something certain Penny has implemented in their pipeline? I mean, I would like that. We'll see. <laughs> it's here's the other thing too is like even if you're not using this as a pipeline at work. I would still, as a character artist, I would absolutely still buy the indie license because, number one, it's just fun as hell. If you're going to bother sculpting something, why not bother sculpting something and rendering it and you can export these animations to Unreal or Blender or, you know, Redshift, Octane, V-Ray, and now you can have a, a cool character that you made act and move and you can even do, like, you know, webcam video and move it yourself. Um... So even as just a character artist who has no pipeline, you don't want to use this in your pipeline, then yeah, I wouldn't use it. However, it, there's a really compelling, you know, this tool set, if I was to say, okay, tech rigging team, make me a tool like this that I can use um, and do, I did two characters last night in about four hours. So two, you know, while I was taking notes, I went ahead and made another vampire. I made a stylized character. Um, I'm not a stylized character artist by trade, so I apologize in advance, but I was able to make two characters last night with custom shapes, custom wrinkles, um, in two hours. And then I can go back, if I want to update anything, it's just click a button, update it, sculpt, sculpt, paint, paint, button back, done. It's updated, you know? Um, this one's taking a while because we're doing every expression, every normal map, um, you know, so it's sending a lot of data over. And in fact, you don't even have to do this. If you want, you can just say, hey, I'm just gonna work on shapes today. Boop. Send over just shapes, uncheck everything else. We're just gonna work on shapes. Come into ZBrush, work on shapes, send those shapes back and we're done. You don't have to do expression wrinkles. You don't have to do all your shapes for every expression. You can just work on a couple. Um, totally fine. Um, there is a, there, yeah, there is a blur mask. Yeah, there, there shouldn't be any edges unless you really like, do a hard wrinkle up to that masked line and then you might have like a weird transition but you know it it it, it does take care of a lot of that um character creator for a lady to make clothing um not like well you can simulate cloth and character creator um but i wouldn't go in there and like just model clothing but you can absolutely so back in this video here so we kind of cover a little bit of that too in the live stream so we did our base body right um then we go through and we say okay here's how I, in zbrush i made all of this clothing and armor and accessories and then threw it through paint, paint, uh, painter and textured it up you drag you can drag and drop all of this into character creator and it'll go hey these are all accessories and you can say no these objects i want to transfer the body weights to the shirt the pants the gloves and then it'll transfer the skin weights to those uh, pieces of clothing and then you can actually bring in a weight map that we just made in zbrush and then that way any cloth will kind of dangle and you know move like cloth should uh you can go to mixamo and bring just drag and drop an animation on your character you can edit oh it's another thing i forgot to mention we were editing facial you can also edit pose you can go through and we'll, we'll talk about this later uh you can then you can use pose tools to take this take your mesh to your high-res ZBrush data. Um, you know, so if your high-res stuff is moved, then hey, why don't why not 3D print it? All your high-res details there. So you can just go ahead and 3D print out your character from your high-res sculptable detail, right? It's not a baked normal map that you can't use. It's The source is ZBrush, so you have the high-res information. 3D print out your character now as opposed to, well, I did all this beautiful work, but it's just normal maps. CC. To ZBrush, bake my normal detail to actual detail. Done. Now I have detail, and you can clean it up in ZBrush or whatever you want to do. Go through CC, pose it out, give it facial expressions, print it, you know, because your high res is being updated, your high res source. And then from that, we went through and we did, uh, okay, we have a goblin. Let's go ahead and make a quick troll with the morphs. And then again, we didn't have to use all just morphs. We did morphs to kind of get the general body shape. And then I go into ZBrush to update that, go into Painter, update the skin texture. And then now we have a troll and then we can even swap between the skin texture. It's the same topology. So, and again, we can 3D print the stuff, but you know, here's, here's him using his accessories. We can save the accessories out and it'll automatically position and bind for you. So now he's using his clothing, even the skin, because the UVs are the same. I can transfer my troll skin to my uh, goblin skin and vice versa. 
Uh, and then also, of course, doing super, you can, you, know, you can do slightly stylized characters, or you can do super stylized characters, exact same process. Again, you can throw it into Marmoset if you want to and render out with your animation. Here's the different type of wrinkles for a stylized character, which we'll get into, um, etc. So, anyway. Okay, so we're in. We're an hour in and we haven't even talked about Facebook. Sorry about that. So, again, look at the chapter link. So here we are in uh, face tools. You're gonna notice immediately, at least I did, as a old school ZBrush user, uh, if I wanna make big changes, my brush kind of caps out at this size. There's a couple of easy fixes for this. Um, what When I was using the body stuff, what I might've said is maybe, hey, Z plugin scale master here, you can set this ZBrush scale unify. That will make everything scaled appropriately for ZBrush's It'll basically make everything you're working on the size of a ZBrush primitive cube, two units. Um, and that way everything is really predictable within ZBrush. Um, it doesn't actually change the scale of your character. All it does is go down here to these export options and change the scale setting right here. Uh, incidentally, if you brought this in and you think something went wrong, go to preferences. Uh, I, it's been rock solid for me, uh, but this is something they mentioned in their video. Uh, preferences, I can't even find it. In Import, export, import. These are the defaults, I believe. So this is what you want to have on for your import settings. So uh, we have our object here. Our brush right now is being capped a little bit. If you double click dynamic, uh, that will turn that off. And now your brush will behave exactly as you expect in ZBrush. Caveat, uh, this that dynamic setting is what controls. If we go grab a sphere here, it goes BI brush insert, IMM industrial parts, hit M on our keyboard. Y'all know how to do this. So here's a Phillips screw. So if I go through here and I start dragging an IMM and we hold on control, it'll snap to that brush size, which is all great until I move my brush away. Uh-oh, now it's bigger. Move it closer. Uh-oh, now it's smaller. That's what that dynamic controls. Uh, also Z modeler stuff. So if you're using Z modeler IMMs, maybe don't use that option. However, for our purposes, we're just sculpting. So I'm not gonna be using IMMs or Z modeler. So this is a totally, let's see, delete all. That is totally uh, a valid workflow. So we'll go back in here and we'll hit F. So uh, if you don't want to do that, you can go in here to what? So I might have said scale master. Don't do that for this. I get really antsy when we're dealing with ZBrush and layers. So in this instance, I wouldn't use ZBrush scale unify. Just to be clear, I should have said that a second ago. Um, you can double click dynamic to turn it off. You can also go in here to preferences, draw, and you can crank up your max brush size. So instead of capping out at 1,000, it'll cap out at 5,000 if you want. There's also a multiplier in here. So you can keep it at 1,000. And you can go in here and say, instead of 1, say 2.5. And that'll give you a multiplier for your brush size. All sorts of different ways. For our purposes, just double click dynamic for your draw size. And uh, it'll get rid of that. So here's our object here. So let's talk about face tools. Under these Z plugin, drag. So we have this little double divider over here. Double click that, that'll open up the divider. Go in here to Z plugin, click this little white icon. Uh, well, if there's a menu in here you don't want, just click the little white dot and it'll get rid of it. You can go in here to Z plugin, grab the white dot, drag it over here. And in here is ZBrush face tools. Not to be confused with ZBrush pose tools. ZBrush pose tools is a free ZBrush plugin from Character Creator. It's totally awesome. That is what we use for Ooh, this playlist, <laughs> Go, let's see, copy, link address. This playlist right here, you want to take a ZBrush model, arbitrary ZBrush model, rig it in Character Creator, move it around, put cloth on it, send it back, 3D print it. That is that playlist right there. Um, we're not using pose tools. That's like a little library, pose library. We're using ZBrush face tools and it's only for face. You'll see there's a base body in here. You're not gonna be using face tools for your body. If you wanna do body, then just go Z. Go and do this workflow right here using a character creator for a neutral base. Do that go Z workflow. It's awesome for body. Uh, for face, eyeballs, teeth, tongue, use face tools. And you can only, and face tools is only gonna do face stuff. So. Uh, what do we have over here? So here's a refresh. So if you open up a Z project and you open up a, uh, you know, if you close, you know, save a Z project and then close it down and then open it back up, hit this button that'll refresh and make sure that it sees all of your expression layers. Speaking of, if we scroll down, 
you're going to see underneath layers, we have our detail layer right here. So if we turn our detail layer off, all this poor detail that came over from Kevin, we can turn that off. All that's going to do is basically toggle off this detail layer. Now, you might be saying, well, do I can I just turn it off here? Sure. I like to keep my plugin and what's happening under the hood synced up. So instead of just turning it off in here and leaving this on, I like to play it safe and just say, hey, detail layer off. It'll go and turn it off. It's synced up. We're good to go. But having said that, you can go in here and you can turn this detail layer on and off. You can even go through here and take the slider and you can say, you know, drop the uh, amount down or raise it up. Um, of course, this is just layer basics, by the way. Layer on, off. Uh, also in here is all your expression layers. So when I go over here and click an expression, it'll activate that layer and put it in record mode. We'll get there in a second. Um, if this update eyes and teeth and tongue, you can have this on. So when you do a jaw open, it'll move the teeth along with it. And then you can change the teeth position for that expression if you'd like. Um, texture map. So with our base head selected uh, and nothing else is on right now, uh, if we go in here and turn on range, this is going to show you again, uh, eyes, teeth, tongue, this face topology UV guide. I'll go ahead and link you to this PDF here. It's not scary. So for the production character artists in the world, this will be very interesting to you. Um, it's all, it's, it's all pretty standard. There's nothing in here that's going to shock or, you know, cause you any concern. It's, it's pretty standard layout. Um, here's the wrinkle sets we we're talking about. One, one, two, two, and three. Here's how it gets, here's how, here's all the data we have. And then it'll deconstruct that data using these wrinkle sets. Uh, anyway, why this is important is, so again, let's hit X to toggle on X symmetry. That's under transform set, activate symmetry. That just turns that on. We're in X symmetry, Y up, Z forward, X across left and right. Uh, and we're gonna, here's how I switch materials. You go in here to this big material ball and you can go and grab green metallic or skin shader four. Instead of doing that every time, I have in my custom interface here, I can just very quickly go through here and swap my materials out so we can see a little bit easier. Incidentally, if you're, if you're like, hey, I'm a character creator user, I don't know anything about ZBrush or I'm a ZBrush user, I don't know anything about character create. I'm trying to do both. Uh, if you are new to ZBrush, I do have a playlist for you. Go to playlists, uh, intro to ZBrush, new and updated. Copy link address, paste. If you're new to ZBrush, 51 videos go through. This will get you caught up on all the bakes. Anything we're doing today, this will have it and more. Uh, also, if you go to my art station page and scroll down to where these little bottom corners are folded over. This is intro to ZBrush. And then everything that's been introduced in ZBrush since 4R8 has its own playlist and its own video. So if you ever want to get caught up and see, hey, what happened in ZBrush 2021? You can click here. You have, there's a, ZBrush 2021 is a huge release. There's a ton of cool videos in here, all bite-sized based on topic that you can go and get caught up on how ZBrush does that. Uh, also, if you're ever, you're like, hey, how did, how did you do this Ninja Turtle? Or how did you make this character here? Uh, how did you, what is this? You can click on it and it'll be, of course, I'll have some quick, easy, digestible stuff in here so you can see what the hell it is. And then you're also gonna have live streams in here. So here's two live streams on making Waffle Ira Garbage Pail Kid, if you're interested in that at all. Same thing for this. If you're in here, you can scroll down and it'll have my live streams easily clickable and organized. So this might be a little bit easier for you. So let's get back in here to uh, what the what these range ranges mean and why they're important. And again, it's not scary. It's just it's and it's also kind of common sense too. So let's say I want to make these nostrils wider. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab my clay brush. Uh, so hit B on your keyboard to go in here. You can go in here and click on here and narrow it down with C, all your C brushes, and then you can look for your clay brush. I have hotkeys assigned. Control Alt Tap any of these brushes and then do your, you know, alt, alt T for trim dynamic, alt S for standard, alt B for clay buildup or clay tubes in my case. Um, basics of ZBrush. So I'm going to go in here. We'll just switch over here to our clay brush. I'm going to turn off RGB for my clay brush. I just want to use it for sculpting data. Um, and I want to make these nostrils bigger. So if I do that blind, let's go ahead and turn our uh, range off. And we'll go ahead and switch over to a matte cap green or green 
metallic. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I want to make his nostrils bigger. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to make his nostrils bigger. If you're ever sculpting on a thin mesh, I would suggest going into your brush settings, go in here to auto masking and turn on back face mask. I have a hotkey set for this, by the way. And also it's in my interface. Again, I, I just want to make sure you're aware because I get like, okay, great. Uh, how do I set up a custom interface? It's all in the intro to ZBrush here. It'll have custom. Yeah, number 11, creating, saving custom brushes. And then down here, number 42, own custom interface and custom menus, speed up your workflow. And hotkeys, I would assume, are in there somewhere. So that's how you set that up. Super easy. And now, so I can just hit Alt F on this brush and then it'll turn on back face masking for me. And what that'll do is allow you to have a big sculpting brush and it won't pull from the inside of the nostril out and make it super thin. Uh, it'll just leave everything it can't see alone. So we're going through here and we're making a, a big old nostril. Uh, we're, we have nothing selected. We have no, the diffuse isn't on, the diffuse layer isn't on or recordable. The expressions aren't on. We're literally just updating the base head. However, if I go in here and turn on my range, now you see this line? Ideally, this line is gonna follow that corner of the nose and go into the labial fold here and that's so when the face animates it's kind of expecting these verts to be in those positions on your face in order to behave normally oops i went through and i just sculpted and now i've got a big old nostril but the nostrils like halfway down the labial fold is halfway down the nostril so it's going to look weird when it animates so instead and i'm going to take my history slider and we'll just slide it on back or we can just click on back to where we're going to hit control Z. <laughs> so we're going to undo back to where we started here. And instead of making our nostril big like that, uh, I would, and you don't have to have your range turned on. Oops. Um, all the range on is doing is just turning on this texture map in ZBrush, by the way. So here we have, I, I turn off a line cursor to surfaces, uh, preferences, edit a line cursor to surface. I'm old school ZBrush. I don't need it flip flopping around while I'm sculpting. Uh, if I want to make this nostril bigger, the right way to do it is just to go in here and move this geometry. So if I go in here and just move this around, and if you're moving around subdivision level six, so uh, here's my tool menu, geometry, open this up, we're on subdivision level six. If you want to make big, broad changes to your character, I would drop it down to subdivision level one or maybe two. Um, that, that way, you're not moving around millions of verts and getting a bunch of, uh, you know, wobbly, bubbly uh, results. Just drop it down. All of your subdivisions are going to follow. This is like a envelope for your higher res subdivision levels. So what CC is going to look at is your subdivision level one for your shapes and your subdivision level six for baking detail. Subdivision levels two through five are just interim envelopes to drive your detail subdivision level six. Same thing with subdivision level one. So if I want a bigger nostril, go in here and just move the nostril around. That way we have the bigger nostril, the line stays where it should, it'll animate much better and you're good to go. You know, so that makes sense, right? So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna turn off range. And again, what that's doing under the hood and part of what I'm doing today is to make sure that it's not scary. What CC is doing is not scary. What, Z, what CC is asking ZBrush to do is not scary. All it's doing is turning off textures, texture, textures down here. All it's doing is turning off layers. That's about it. And yeah, there's masks in here. That's literally all it's doing. So if you ever get in a weird spot or you're like, oh no, what? this is on, but it's not on over here. Oh, I have to shut down everything and open it back up, right? It's not scary. It's totally fixable. It's nothing to be afraid of. Because I know when I'm learning something new, my first inclination is to be like, oh no, it doesn't work anymore. Shut it down, restart from scratch the entire process, go. Um, don't do that. There's nothing scary going on here. I'm here to help you kind of see what it's doing under the hood so that nothing, it's all fixable, right? So uh, hopefully I can say that clearly. I'm again, an hour and a half in and we haven't done anything. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> uh, I can be long-winded. So... Here we have our texture map. Here, let me just get caught back up to what we're doing. Once I get rolling, I think it will go a little bit better. Uh, detail sculpting. Okay, so we'll switch back here to Matcap Gray. So like I said, we can go through here and we can start updating 
our base shape here. Uh, and again, we don't have, well, just really quickly, just so you see, we had a texture map in here that showed us our range. However, um, you know, we'll switch back to 7 level 6, and we'll go over here and we'll turn on Diffuse. All that's going to do is go through all of your subtools and swap out that texture with your um, with a diffuse map. We can transfer this diffuse map to our poly paint, update it on the fly. Well, of course, we'll do that, but that's literally all it's doing. If I want to, I can turn that texture off manually, but of course, I like to use this. Just go ahead and turn diffuse off. So we're going to start updating this head. We're going to... Uh, we have no diffuse on. We have no expressions on. We have no detail layer on. We're going to update what this thing looks like. So we're going to go through here. We're going to drop it down to subject level one or two, and we're going to go through here and make changes. So for you know, a, a vampire character, maybe we'll lift the nose up. We'll go through here with our Damien standard brush, Dam standard. Uh, again, if you want to select that B, D, S, uh, you can of course store a hotkey for it like we do. We can go through here and just start making our overall changes. If you did, if you weren't able to, you know, make a, an elf ear, just go in here to ZBrush and make your elf ear. Go in here and mask. Control tap to invert that mask. Control tap to blur your mask. Uh, go in here with your gizmo. Hit W. Alt tap a surface. Go through here and just make whatever changes you want uh, to your character. Uh, one thing I did to B S J is spiral brush. You can hold down Alt, um, and you can spiral that way, or you can let go of Alt and it'll spiral this way. So you can use this to kind of put a little flare on your ears. This isn't going to be a ZBrush sculpting tutorial class. This is more just me, oops, uh, with your standard brush, sometimes it'll turn everything off with the plugin. Uh, just turn on Z add, you're fine. Uh, so we can go through here, we can add a little wrinkles. Uh, one thing we were doing was like going through here and really kind of making this. Um, I have a so one thing I should mention my brush, smooth brush modifiers. If I hold down shift to smooth, you'll see it's set to one by default. Uh, that's smooth stronger. So, I what I have to do is hold down shift and bring my Z intensity down when I'm working on low res. Uh, Geo, just to kind of take the edge off my smooth brush. So we're going to go through here and we're going to really pop those cheekbones. And uh, it, you can change things proportionally. You can move eyeballs around. You can alt tap the eyeballs, for example. That'll select your eyeballs and then you can move, scale, rotate, paint on them if you want. It'll take that poly paint for your eyeballs and send it back. Again, all stuff we're going to do. So again, going through here and uh, oops, alt tap. The, the head to select it. And again, if you want to, again, alt tapping is how I select things. You can also go through here and just select it uh, in here. So we'll go ahead and turn off. So the skin neutral head has poly paint on. You can turn that off, off if you want. We're going to transfer the texture to the poly paint in just a minute. Uh, clay buildup uh, or clay tubes is another one. Uh, if you really want to see, uh, like there's who, who is responding, uh, like Magdalena, uh, who else? Paul Liao, like those, those, are the really good people at this type of stuff that I'm showing you. So I'm going to Google ZBrush Masters and I go and click on here. And if you really want, like, you can watch me do my thing. Uh, if you really want to know how to sculpt like an awesome person, uh, like watch Geo's uh, video here, watch Magdalena's video here. In fact, I want to say that in that video, there's brushes and I think I took some of them. So if I hit the comma key on my keyboard, go to the brush settings here and scroll over. Do I? Yeah, Magdalena brushes. So you can load these up. In fact, I swapped out my clay tubes brush with hers. So basically, and I want to say the clay tubes, it's basically stroke modifiers, roll distance set to five, and then intensity down and maybe some other settings. But essentially, that's just a really good way to kind of build up forms and volumes. And of course, drop your Z intensity down to what makes sense. For what you're working on so go through here and use your standard brush move brush clay brush two clay tubes brush whatever you want to use to go through and make your totally cool character and if you want to do a stylized character make it into a stylized character We're, we, we do that as well i'm going to skip ahead um just so you don't have to watch me sculpt a bunch of stuff but essentially do that for 40 minutes or an hour I'm going to go through here. I'm going to say file open. And I've never actually done this sec this step. So hopefully it works. We'll load up my vampire head block out. If I can. Oh. This computer has a really slow, laborious hard drive. 
So now, here, oh, here, here's just, <laughs> so this is a very early file, sorry. Uh, this is basically what I had, and then in CC, what I'll do is I'll say file open. I'll just go ahead and link these up. So let's see, skins, nope, that's not the one. Uh, streaming vampire block out. Would you like to save? No. Replace all. So everything we've done up to this point is, you know, nothing has changed. I went in, I loaded up Kevin, I moved some morphs around, and I ended up with, wait for it, well, I'll show you. I ended up with this face right here. So this this is the face I went with last night. Uh, and again, it was like 90 minutes to make this character. So do some morphs, go into ZBrush, do this. Sculpt on this for a long time, and eventually, let's see, uh, again, file, open. I'm going to open up. My refine. So sculpt, 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 sculpt. Um, clay brush, standard brush, clay build up brush, and eventually uh, get to this point here. Again, you can always go back down to like subdivision level one, and this is like moving a big envelope. If you want to make big, smooth changes, this is where you want to do it. The higher res you go, this is where things get more and more detailed, all the way up to subdivision level six. Now, I stopped myself just short of going in here to pour details. Um, it's still there's a lot of d data in here, but if I want to, I can go in here to, uh, again, my comma key. Uh, Pablo Munoz Gomez has an awesome uh, skin brushes in here, so you can go through. If you want to do that, poor, those poor details, it, I don't even want to use my detail layer. I do everything from scratch because I'm a real artist. Absolutely, go for it. And you can go through here and you can do like skin base, directional, and all that good stuff. And there's tons of skin brushes you can get and tileable you know, skin details and different types of pores on the nose versus the neck versus the chin versus the, I don't know, whatever. You can absolutely do that. Uh, basically what I did was just stick with, uh, here's a brush called Dam Standard 02. You can download that, for, that's from Damien. Uh, Damien Standard Brush, this is Dam Standard 02. You can Google that and you can download it. Uh, I would I would use this for like my, um, I mean, it's, it's okay for like bigger, wrinkles as well, but I definitely use this for like skin direction. Uh, so kind of going through here and just kind of changing skin direction and getting some wrinkles and putting some little uh, blemishes on here. You can also turn off X symmetry, of course, if you want to do non-symmetrical sculpting. Of course, you don't probably don't want everything symmetrical, right? You want it to kind of crisscross back and forth over. So after a bunch of sculpting, going through here with your standard brush and then smoothing this out and then uh, what else did we do? Honestly, this is just move move brush, clay build up, damn standard, a little bit of clay brush maybe, you know, go in here with your clay brush. So workflow, if you want to do, you know, big carving changes, just your damn standard brush and I'll probably be on like subdivision level three. Again, I just work my way up. So here, we'll turn next temperature back on. Uh, I wanna kind of enhance this, enhance this, go in here with my standard brush, pop, pop these out uh, even more. Uh, go in here with your clay brush and kind of build up to that lip. Again, damn standard holding down alt will pull out. Uh, letting go of alt will push in. Uh, standard brush too, you can just pull out and push in. Just hold down alt and let go of alt basically. That just does the add Z sub. Shift to smooth. Um, clay brush, clay build up brush, et cetera, et cetera. You're, you're, you'll eventually get up to a certain level of detail around subdivision level five or six where you're going through here and you're kind of doing some pretty... Um, pretty tertiary details, you know, not poor level, but approaching it. Uh, you can go through here and again, just kind of go through and just add your wrinkles here. And then we'll go through here and we'll enhance these with our standard brush or our clay brush or our clay buildup brush, whatever you want to use, depending on what you're trying to get. Um, also something really fun in ZBrush. Uh, if we go here to BCK, that's our, that's a cloth brush. So BC, and then there's a bunch of cloth brushes in here. Um, in your dynamics menu, if again, go to my YouTube channel, intro to ZBrush 2021, what's new, or go in here, and this will tell you all about cloth brushes, all about how uh, this dynamics menu works, all of these settings and what they mean. Long story short, what I can do is I'll drop down to like subdivision level three or four in this case for these small wrinkles. Uh, I'm gonna grab a little section of this. Um, I can go through here again, BCK, I can go near my cloth hook brush. This is really gonna push the mesh around like he's made out of like tissue paper. 
Uh, if I want to limit that, I can go down here to like thick skin, turn this on, and then it'll be like I'm pushing skin around um, uh, a cartilage, basically. You can also go in here to, uh, like say I go to my pinch brush. For any brush, you can turn on cloth properties. So you can go in here to elasticity, crank that simulation and iterations up to 100. So now when I use my pinch brush, it'll go through and it'll enhance my wrinkles. So I can go through and use cloth, dynamic cloth to go through and create you know, wrinkle detail as well. Um, and there you go. You got this character. So let's say we got the character to this point by doing a bunch of sculpting that you didn't have to sit through. You're welcome. Um, and I have the time lapse for my original vampire. So if anybody's interested in that, um, uh, maybe I'll publish it, but I can't imagine anybody cares. So probably not. Um, so we have our character here and it's all sculpted. Let me look at my notes real quick. Make sure we're not doing anything weird. Yeah. So now we've got our detail sculpted. Let's let's poly paint this guy. I'm going to go over here and turn on diffuse. Oh, also, I probably should have, should have hit refresh just to make sure that I mean, it, it picked up right where I left off. No problems. Uh, I think because I had it low, I had an object loaded and then I loaded another file with the same names and it was like, yeah, we're fine. So it's fine. Uh, so let's say I want to go do some poly painting. So by default, we'll switch over to skin shader. We have Kevin's skin. It's a good base. Uh, it's why I chose him. Uh, but we can also go in here to texture map and we can say, if you want to adjust this, by the way, you can go in here to texture with the texture selected and go down here to, uh, there's like an adjust texture with it selected. Uh, I'm just going to throw it over to my poly paint. So make sure subdivision level six is selected. This is your highest resolution ZBrush. And remember when we first sent it over, it said we want to do a 2K subdivision level six file. So we have a 2K, I think, yeah, we have a 2048 uh, map in here and we want to transfer this texture to my poly paint. All we have to do in our poly paint, what poly paint is, is just vert color. And ZBrush can handle vert so well, you know, I can subdivide this no problem to 420, 40, I don't know, whatever this would subdivide to, you know, multiple millions of polygons. Uh, and transfer a 4K texture map to poly paint and it would transfer basically the pixel detail to my vertex, RGB vertex color. So every vertex in ZBrush has a positional data where the vertex is in space, X, Y, and Z, as well as RGB information. So we can transfer pixels from a map to poly paint data or vertex color data and we can use vertex color to really go in and fine tune this. On top of that, so we're going to, so here's our texture map, here's our poly paint. Um, Let's go ahead and say poly paint from texture. Our texture's loaded. We'll go ahead and sit M, we'll just hit MRGB or MRGB. Go in here and say poly paint from texture. That's gonna transfer our texture to our poly paint data. Nothing changed. It's just a pixel transfer over to our verts. Uh, it turned our texture off for us, thank you. In fact, just to play it safe, I'm gonna turn off diffuse. Don't need it on for the rest of the time. Texture is off, diffuse is off poly paint colorizes on this little paintbrush right here if you want to turn it off and go and say hey turn this off i just want to look at my sculpt no problem just hit this little paintbrush icon and or that toggles on this colorize icon here so you can do both uh while we're in poly paint mode we can also go in here to adjust colors we'll hit frame and recenter so now uh if i want to i think a real easy one for a vampire skin is to say hey crank up that rgb contrast yeah, that already makes them look pretty sickly. You can drop the HSV saturation down. If you want to play with any of the RGB intensities or red, green, blue channels or gamma, you can go through here and kind of mess with this. This is fine. Hit OK. Uh, and now you have a base poly paint to start working with. Uh, if we want to modify this, uh, pretty easy. Uh, again, I'm not the expert at awesome poly paints. I'm not the expert at awesome expressions. Go watch the ZBrush masters who do this stuff for a living. Um, I'm the Brian Fellows of ZBrush, but if I go in here to my standard brush, for example, uh, I'm going to turn off Z add because I'm just going to be poly painting and just have RGB turned on. Or you can hit B on your keyboard for brush menu, P for all the brushes that start with P, and there's A, paint brush. That's your standard brush with RGB turned on and Z add turned off. I'm just old school, standard RGB on, call it a day. Uh, you can also swap out your alphas. So we can go through here and we can grab like alpha 23, little dots alpha, dot stroke. We can go through here, I can sample this color right here and we can go through and we can just kind of start painting on this character and just update it. Uh, you can also do a spray stroke and even in here you have color spray where you can change like color and flow, color variance and flow and intensity variance. 
Uh, again, I'm just keeping it simple and just going through here and we can lighten this up Oop. through here. We can get rid of this, this cap up here. Oh, also you can turn down the RGB intensity so it's not crazy strong and you can kind of feather in uh, information and detail. So again, also you're going to see while I'm using my standard brush, it kind of has a little, um, it's got a little rubber band behind it. That is awesome. So if I turn off poly paint, go back here and turn my color back to white. So again, let's switch over to our damn standard brush. Uh, so while I'm, you know, we'll just use our standard brush. So standard brush, alpha off, I'm just using, oh, and then turn on Z add RGB off. So I'm using my standard brush, right? I'm getting these long, smooth, clean strokes through here. No problem. I can, by default, your stroke lazy mouse is turned on for your standard brush, set the radius of one. If I crank that up, then I'm getting a very long stroke behind it that'll really smooth it out. If I go down here and again, set it to lazy radius of one, it'll be, it'll be much shorter, much more reactive, um, but it still has a nice smooth effect on your stroke. If you want to go through here and like put dots on something, it's a little harder to do with that. So what you can do is tap L on your keyboard that turns lazy mouse on and off. So then you can go through here and you can like put in like little blemishes and stuff. And then you can go through here if you want to turn that off for any sculpting reasons, feel free to turn that on and off. Um, yes. So I want to make sure I call that out and then L to turn that back on. We'll say skin shader back on. We'll turn our texture back or colorize back on. And then uh, again, our standard brush dot stroke this alpha Z add on RGB Z add off RGB on and then go through here and again C tapping C on your keyboard and hovering over a pixel in ZBrush will sample that color um, holding down alt will switch it to the background color if you want in that case we're not in our case we're not gonna do that so I'll just go through here and I'll basically paint on his bald cap and again I'll sample different colors. I'll just tap C on here. I can go through here and just change this color a little bit and just go through and refine. Uh, and again, this is all base mesh. We haven't even talked about expression face, expression shapes or wrinkles or any of that. We're literally just updating uh, the base uh, vampire here. So go through. Uh, what else did we do? Uh, we can switch this back alpha off. We can do like a blue color RGB intensities down. We can go through here and we can paint blue on here. Uh, like just very lightly. You can also, incidentally, underneath brush, while you're painting, there are alpha and texture options you can play with. Again, if you ever are like, hey, go on YouTube, Google alpha, ZBrush alpha and texture brush, and then it'll take you to maybe one of my videos that'll talk about it, or maybe somebody else's. Go for it. Um, I was also gonna talk about um, smooth brush modifiers, alpha and texture. Is it in here? Um, I don't, obviously I don't do this a ton. Is it under modifiers? Brush. Uh, oh no, I just, I just forgot where all this stuff goes. Um, somewhere in here. Oh, poly paint mode. <laughs> so with our standard brush, you can change your poly paint mode. By default, it's at the standard. You can change it to colorize, uh, multiply, lighten, and darken. So if you wanna change these modes for this brush while you're painting, feel free. Uh, you can also change it from a dot stroke to a drag rect and we can put in like a little veiny alpha, alpha 22. You can just go through here and just drag out, uh, you know, the color. So we can say maybe a dark blue, put in some, oops, let's drop that RGB intensity down. Go ahead and make them look all vampire-y and, you know, purples and greens and all that subtle skin texture and detail. Uh, I got like a Brahm painting, you know. Also the zones of the face, you know, put your golden zones here and your blood pooling red zones in here. And it, when we get to stylize, it'll be really obvious. It's cooler tones down here. So anyway, once, oh, also on your eyeballs. So we'll alt tap the eyeballs here. Um, and the eyeball by default is already set to session level five. It's already transferred the poly paint for us. So all we have to do is we can hold down control and I can mask out this pupil, for example, control tap to blur it a little bit, that edge, control tap to invert that. And then we can go through here. And again, we can say, uh, we have, it's already set the poly paint. We can say adjust colors, we'll hit frame. Let's go ahead and hide our mask temporarily. I can go through here and I can change our hue just for the iris here. We can crank up the RGB intensity or the saturation here. We'll just change this to a, a blue eyeball here. 
Um, or you can keep that mask, invert that mask, and you can go through here and we can make, uh, he can give a little pink eye on the right side here. So again, we'll go out of solo mode. We have standard brush turned on. We'll switch back to no alpha dot stroke, uh, RGB intensity down. I can go through here, we'll turn off lazy mouse, and we can just, you know, redden. He got, uh, somebody farted in his pillow, and now he's got, you know, one pink eye and one blue eye. Uh, this will all be sent back to ZBrush. It'll just bake it out for you. Uh, also, teeth. So let's turn off his head here. And we have teeth. Uh, the teeth have a texture along with it. So what I'm going to do, but no subdivision. So unlike the eyeballs, we're going to have to do this manually. So geometry, control D. One, two, three, four. Go as high as you want. Subdivision level five is fine. Maybe subdivision level six, 1.12 million. And then in order to get a, a good starting point, we'll say texture on. And just like we did for the face, we'll say poly paint from texture. Oops. We want to make sure intensity is all the way up. Poly paint from texture. Alt tap the bottom teeth. Subdivide, subdivide. Control D is subdivide, by the way. If you don't want to go to geometry and hit divide. And then again, texture on, poly paint from texture. So now we have a good starting point for our teeth. Again, we can, we do have subdivision level one, two, two, five. So we want to make big changes. Drop down to subdivision level one. Go in here to polyframe and you can see the, the verts on here. We'll turn on X symmetry. I want to grab the canines just by themselves. Or if you just want to grab the teeth, control shift drag over a little piece of this gums, control shift A, uh, that will visibility grow all. And then control shift drag, and then you have your teeth. So you can say control tap to mask the gums, control shift tap to bring everything else back. And now you can move around all of the teeth separate from the gums. In fact, if we have our move brush selected, we can go down here to brush menu. I got a brush menu I have open all over here because I'm in here all the time. Um, modify, not modifiers, auto masking. And down here we have topological. So you can change the range down to whatever makes sense. And then now instead of moving everything, whatever you click on first, if there's nothing vert welded to it, it'll just move that part of the object here. So we want to put in some nice daggers for teeth and move those around. And in fact, if we want to make these in a like really creepy Nosferatu uh, teeth, you know, feel free. Um, and you don't have to have X symmetry turned on, obviously. And one thing, one option I like to do for move brush is go in here to curve and turn on accu curve. That allows you to kind of pull in and out to points and corners a little bit easier. So now, you know, we can give them some nice mangled, uh, you know, teeth and you can even, I, so here's the thing. We cannot change the vert order. So we can't delete anything. We can't slice through anything because this subdivision level one, two reasons, the subdivision level one relationship, uh, you can't change verts on here and have it update. Technically you can by projecting detail from a change low res subdivision level one to high. However, you got to jump through those hoops. You got to free subdivision levels or you got to, you know, use a bunch of projection stuff. Another reason we can't do that is these verts, this vert order for subdivision level one has a relationship with character creator. It's expecting verts in a certain order in a certain, uh, uh, you know, these verts are numbered. It's expecting these exact verts to be sent back over to character creator. So um, no changing verts uh, on your character. However, if we want to, you know, get rid of a tooth, we can just grab it, control shift A, mask, and oh, so grab it, control shift A, mask, invert that mask, W, and we can scale it down, stick it up in here, and call it a day. That that's totally fine. Uh, also, poly painting. Obviously, if you're if you're gonna poly paint on here, it's going to be very low res because there's not very many verts with RGB data for you to use. Go to subdivision level six. All of a sudden, you have tons of vert data. Uh, so you can go through here again. Damn standard O2. Let's do control shift A. We can just control shift drag too. Go into our damn standard O2 and just carve in, uh, you know, some teeth detail. You can actually carve in and RGB at the same time if you want to. So while you're carving in, it it might put in a little. Uh, this alpha doesn't work so well for that. Damn standard does. So damn standard with RGB turned on and Z turned on will uh, behave as normal. And then you can drop your RGB intensity down. So you can kind of sculpt and do a little poly painting at the same time. I generally go in here. Oh, that's another thing I should talk about. It's just go in here and do, you know, tooth detail first. And then I'll follow back up with like a standard brush RGB intensity 
RGB turned on, choose a color, and then just go in here and kind of, you know, turn lazy mouse back on. It'll smooth your stroke out a little bit, drop your RGB intensity down. Uh, we can go back out of solo mode, control shift tap. So I'm going to grab the gums, control shift A, um, control tap the mask, bring everything back. And now I can just paint on the teeth. Again, RGB will put on some nice tartar on his teeth or whatever. And then we can go back in here. We can again sample a color by tapping C, go through here and paint however you want your teeth to look. Um, speaking of poly painting, uh, let's go back. Uh, we'll turn our head back on. Another way you can update your poly paint because we got all this interesting wrinkle detail, right? But I don't want to have to go, I mean, you can, but I don't want to have to go in here and like poly paint on all of my wrinkles individually. Um, you can kind of fast track that a little bit by going down here. And again, we have, just to reiterate, we have nothing selected. All the work we're doing up till now is literally just updating our base mesh. So uh, again, we have color has turned on. Underneath masking, we have a lot of masking options. I'm gonna turn on flat colors. You see the mask a little bit better. So if I go down here to say mask by cavity, for example, there's mask by peaks and valleys, mask by curvature, mask by normals, and mask by cavity. Um, we'll do mask by cavity here, and we can see when we do that, it goes through and masks our wrinkles for us. And in fact, you can change this cavity profile. So you can drop this down a little bit and update. So unmask, control drag to unmask, and you can say mask by cavity. You can add a blur value in there if you'd like, and you can dial this in to get the cavity masking that you'd like. You can also adjust this mask. So we'll go in here to a mask profile. If we hit apply on this one, it'll go through and clean this up a little bit. You can hit reset. Uh, you can crank this over. You can hit apply. That'll grab more. Uh, you can crank this this way. Uh, it'll, it'll grab just the wrinkles. So you can use this as an adjustment on top of your mask curve. Oops. Reset here. You can also blur it a little. So instead of blur of two, a blur of five. So it'll go through and kind of mask your creases. We can control tap to invert that mask and now we can start painting. Looking at the mask while you paint is a little difficult. So you can go up here and turn off view mask. It'll still work. And then you can grab, you know, you can sample a darker color. Maybe we want to paint our wrinkles this color and then we can go through and we can, you know, paint in this or we can go to a much lighter color and we can paint in, you know, lighter wrinkles. So, you know, you know crusty lips. And then again, control tap to invert that mask turn it off and now your wrinkles will be masked and then you can come in here and you can highlight you know little sections on top of the wrinkles and you know just do big mass changes um so and then we'll go back to skin shader 4 and when you're done with all that it will look something like this so um we have our base head that we started off in in um, character creator right and we've done a ton of work in zbrush to get to a vampire head so how do we send this data back let's go ahead and refresh just to make sure we're all caught up so we've done this we sculpted there's nothing there's no rocket science going on there's nothing crazy that we've done so far it's all basic zbrush functionality we've changed the eyeballs a little bit um, if i turn off the head here we've got you know some vampire teeth and eyeballs and stuff like that so we're ready to send this data back to character creator uh we we can keep going uh, the very first vampire i did i did it all in one it was like 90 minutes i went through and sculpted the head i went through and changed every expression and painted it and then sent all that data back in one sitting uh you can break it up so it's like okay we've done the base mesh head changes whoo haven't touched face expression shapes or expression wrinkles yet, but we can send this data back. So ZBrush face tools, um, update to character creator. It's gonna go through and make sure everything's there. Everything's labeled correctly. Everything it has what it needs. And you're gonna get this scary menu. It's not that scary. Base update, expre uh, expression and wrinkle update. So remember, we, these are the three first things we talked about. The base update is these are the verts and the color and the details for just your plain old face. No expressions, no shapes, just your head. So we've we've gone from this guy to this thing in ZBrush. Um, and I'm, I haven't done any expression stuff yet. 
uncheck it. Don't need to send that data back over. It's a waste of time. Uh, on our base mesh, what did we update? If you didn't up, if you just updated the base mesh and didn't do any poly painting or any details, then just have this selected. But we did poly paint, we did do details, and there is a cavity um, texture that will be baked out as well. And you can have a little slider uh, in your material that you can basically change this. Uh, what else did we change? We changed the tongue texture, the eye texture, teeth, and head. So we changed all of this, and it was at 2048. Okay. So these options make sense now, right? It's not scary. It makes sense. We're going to update this to character creator. And uh, I'll head back over here. Um, I, I'm not taking, I mean, I'm doing a face process here. So no, <laughs> if it's an easy one that's relevant to what I'm doing in here, I can answer Zebra's questions. But uh, I've already gone off on, I'm two hours in and we're not even to the stylized head yet. So I'm going to skip Zebra's questions if that's cool. Um, cool, cool, cool. Cool. Uh, okay, so file's been successfully exported. Uh, we can swap back over here and it'll say, hey, we have some options. Uh, any, any movement you've made to the face will move the bones to fit your vert position. Uh, it'll go ahead and realign the tear line, the little, the wet line. Um, at the eyeball, it'll regenerate and realign your eye occlusion so it looks like the eyeball's sitting nicely in your head. And then also we updated the head color, right? We, it'll update the body color along with the head color. And it's going to bake all of that detail to our character. And I'm also going to hop into, because there's a, there's a lighting scenario we can change to. There, if you want to, let's wait for this to update there underneath so we're in the scene tab right now we have our body selected uh you can go in here to here's your props in your scene you have lights in your scene you can change and add you know directional lights and stuff you also have in your content folder underneath your stage there's a light room and i'm going to double click authority that's going to swap our lights out and then we have a really nice creepy uh light setup for our character now what we've updated so far is just the base head. However, we can go into, well, first we can say, you know, motion, wrinkle check, dramatic male, we'll say. And then we'll say plus, oh, thank you so much, St Stolo. You're awesome. Um, yeah, hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully, again, I'm gonna have the real video soon. Um, so we still have facial animation. You're gonna see some issues. We haven't done the wrinkles yet, and it has the poly paint for Kevin on our vampire. We can totally fix that. But you can see we do have the face moves just fine, uh, and the shapes work just fine. So all that vert order is working great. All of our teeth, our, our eyeballs are updated. Our teeth and color is updated. So very cool. So we'll go ahead and say motion pose. We'll go back to eight pose. So we are updated. Now, you may be asking, well, what about the body? Remember, my, my probably, you, we, can, we can do the face first and then do the body. Um, I have a feeling how I would do things is do this process first. Again, using Character Creator to go through and detail a body and paint it up. And then I would use face tools to enhance my body and face that I've already done with expressions. I would basically use face tools for expressions only instead of sculpting the base, but we're doing both. So here is the uh, character here and we have it updated. And now we're gonna hop back into ZBrush and we're gonna talk about, finally, we're gonna talk about expressions. So uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Expressions, back CC, okay. So back in ZBrush, da, da, da. yep, yep. Uh, modify. So another thing too is back when we sent over, well, here's an overview. So just like when we said, hey, I want to export all this stuff to Character Creator, you can work on three aspects of wrinkles. You can work on just the base forms of these wrinkles. So let's talk, uh, look, first, well, actually one more thing I want to talk about. Polygroup selections. Remember in the teeth, we're like grabbing a little piece of it and then doing control shift A. In uh, here, you have polygroups. So you can hold down, so turn on polyframe or shift F and you can go through here. And if you want to like, Hey, I want to work on the lower lip or I want to move the lower lip down. You can use move brush and auto masking and topological to kind of just grab the bottom lip, but you can also go in here and use uh, poly groups. So control shift tap to grab a poly group. Let's go into solo mode here. Um, control shift tap to add to that in inverted selection, control shift drag to invert your selection, 
you know, so now here's just the mouth bag polygroups. We can invert that. Now just the mouth bag is invisible. Control shift tap to bring everything else back. So an easy way to kind of go through and make quick selections. Um, incidentally, if you want to grow two polygroups, we can hold down control shift, grab two polygroups. Control shift Q is polygroup grow all. So that way you can grab, you know, this. Uh, another thing you can do is if we go down, it's like sort of level two, you can grab a polygroup and then do control shift X to expand, control shift S to shrink that selection. So with those, along with visibility selection, along with topological brushes, you should be able to get pretty far for easy selection. Sorry about that. Um, so working on expressions, we can send back just subdivision level one changes, no wrinkle normal detail um, added, just moving around shapes. Uh, so if I wanna do a brow raise, I can like literally when we were, you know, going into our edit facial profile editor and moving the brow up, if you hit go Z, you would bring you into an interface much like this, you would fix the brow and then you'd say go Z back. In face tools, you can do brow raise just move around your low res verts, send just the low res vert data back and you're done. You've updated your shapes and you can do it on multiple expressions in one sitting, no problem. Um, you can also do wrinkle normal. So that's where we get into subdivision level six. Uh, any wrinkle detail you add with brow raise, it'll go ahead and say, okay, great. When the brows go up, you've added some interesting wrinkles up here. I will bake those wrinkles back to character creator and update the shapes. Two. Three is you can poly paint with that wrinkle detail um, and then send all three back so that when the brows go up, uh, you know, speaking of, let's go back to, I don't know why LinkedIn is just where I know the video is. Um, <laughs> I put it all on my social, but it's here. Um, in fact, on this vampire, I'm not going to do that on this one. I did a shape where when his brows go down and he's angry, I put a little symbol on his head. So that means, so here, here's me painting on the brow down. I just painted the symbol. You don't have to paint symbols. You can just paint wrinkles, but do whatever you want. If you want a certain expression to, you know, turn your character's face blue when it does something, then just paint it uh, and it'll, it'll fade in. So if I go through here and I am deconstructing back, so you'll watch his forehead as he's doing his furrowed brow uh, or even animating, you'll see he'll, that, that poly paint will show up. Totally doable. Same thing with the stylized character. If you want brows down to have little ink lines, paint it in, it'll deconstruct it back, bake it, and then when that brow happens, ink will show up where you wanted it to. So having said all of that, let's talk about expressions. So and we're gonna do all three at once, just like the base head, we did poly paint and details and blah, 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 send it all back over with same thing for expressions. Originally, when we sent over our information from Kevin, he already had really nice wrinkle detail. Like that's kind of why I used him. He has really nice normal maps. What CC did was, if I go through here, for example, brow raise, it's gonna take Kevin's brow raise normal map and turn it into geometry and it's applied in a layer. So here's his brow raise. Uh, the poly paint's kind of distracting right now, so I'm gonna turn off this colorize, go back to white, and we'll switch to green metallic. So when brow raise happens, two things happen. Number one, these verts change. Uh, number two, when I clicked brow raise, it uh, went into the brow raise layer and made it recordable. Uh, so these verts all moved up into the brow raise position. That's the expression shape. Also what happened is character creator took Kevin's normal map, transferred into a height map, into a displacement in ZBrush, bake that to this brow raise layer um, and put this information here. So now that normal detail is now baked into actual geometry that I can now manipulate in ZBrush. If you wanna see this in action, uh, again, when I hit brow raise, it selected the layer and put it in record mode. I can temporarily turn off record mode and then I can just take this and just lower it. So if you wanna see this in action as the brows go up, again, subdivision level one, it's moving the shape. Subdivision level six, it's moving the shape. And while that shape moves, we're getting geometry detail that'll be baked into a normal map back in Character Creator. Um, yay, so I'm gonna turn record back on because while we're in here, we wanna be recording this change. Another thing we can be recording and adding to this layer is a poly paint. 
So you can work on the shapes first and then add poly paint or add it at the same time, it's up to you. Uh, like I said, I didn't do a tremendous amount of work on this in particular, um, but that's okay. Uh, again, this is just a, you can go as crazy as you want with your shapes, like make them really exaggerated and your wrinkles, do whatever you want. Uh, in fact, for reference, y'all might like this. Let's go to corner, character creator, face tool. Pav face, that's me, Michael Pavlovich, expression reference. So I went through and I recorded myself in 4K and I synced the video. So I basically made myself reference of all the expressions. So brow raise, brow drop, compression, uh, all the wrinkle sets, you know, so all the, all the, if you want to work on the wrinkle, like here's wrinkle set one, here's all, dang it. Um, so here's all the wrinkles and wrinkle set one happening uh, with my face. So just, again, it's just good reference. If you want to go to, you know, 1024 scan store and grab their expression and then deconstruct that and project and then you have other reference of other people's faces that's also totally awesome um and this is 4k too so if i go here to video and i say always fit window you can see <laughs> sorry but you know this is you know you got some poor detail in there and all the little micro wrinkles and as this slides up you know all these wrinkles that happen um cool so anyway, that's my video reference. So let me see. And then you can, of course, pause it and then watch those things. Uh, always fit window. There we go. So here we have this. Uh, we'll hold down shift. Uh, you can hold down shift and smooth. You can go in here again with your damn standard O2 brush and go through here. And you can enhance these wrinkles. You can smooth them out and change the wrinkles. You have full range of your shape. So if you want to go through here and smooth out these lower subdivision levels and then go through and change them and then update the pore detail. You absolutely can make any changes you want uh, to the wrinkles here. I just used them as a starting point uh, and then enhanced them. You know, obviously if you, you don't even have to send this data over, you can uncheck. I remember when we, when we sent it over, uncheck all, it'll just move the face shapes into place and then you can go through here and sculpt whatever you want without having to deal with getting rid of these and then changing them. Um, Anything else I want to talk about in here? Pile on and off, cloth brushes the skin. Oh, also, I don't know if this will be super um, useful, but there's also uh, Zebra Summit 2018 DNEG, uh, you know, had this awesome way to use Morph Project to have skin sliding uh, for their creatures. So as, as, you know, these shapes are moving, it'll look like skin is sliding uh, the topology is sliding across, you know, the surface of bone, basically. Cool, huh? So I will link y'all to that. Copy here. Cool. Um, okay, so we got that scan data work. Oh, also speaking of the scan data workflow, because this is going to be relevant here. So here, here's where we are. He's go. They go in and do the scan data uh, projection, and the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is this is a really useful uh, previs tool. And I'm going to open up another video real quick. Uh, face tool. Scan workflow. That's seven. So here, and this is going to be relevant to the poly painting we're going to be doing. So they're pro you're, you're, pro you're projecting this expression to that shape and then you're getting the scan data into that shape and then sending that back to CC and it'll deconstruct it back and bake out your wrinkle maps and all that good stuff. The reason this is important is if you look at the scan data, as the wrinkles happening, you're gonna see there's AO, there's a little bit of redness, though the skin gets a little whiter, you know, where the skin kind of crunches up and then in the crevices it gets a little redder. All of that stuff you can just poly paint in. So that's just something I wanted to bring up. So speaking of that, you, let's say you've gone through and you've updated your wrinkles to be as beautiful as you want. Uh, and then we can again turn back on our skin shader and we'll turn back our poly paint on. And we don't have any poly paint data. We can make it though. Um, one easy way is just going to your standard brush, RGB turned on, RGB intensity mid 30 to 50, let's say. Um, we'll go ahead and like sample a reddish color, maybe drop it down a little bit, a little more red. 
and you can just do a basic, also make sure, you know, tap L to turn lazy radius, put it on one so you get a nice smooth stroke. And you know, maybe a little redder. We can go through and we can just do a first pass where you just kind of paint, you know, in that redness. You can also use masking like we did earlier, where you can go and mask in crevices and cavities. I'm not getting that detailed with this. So you can just manually go through and update this. And if I turn on flat color, you'll see what we're doing. You can also make a smaller brush go down here to RGB intensity raised up, and then go through here and really get that nice contact shadow in here with whatever color you want. And if you wanna paint a symbol on this expression, remember that as this expression kicks in, whatever you put in that poly paint, if you wanna paint it blue, you wanna whatever, uh, all of that will be baked into the expression wrinkle information so that when this shape drives those that wrinkle normal that gets baked out, it'll show up. So again, there we go, we got updated wrinkles. So knock yourself out, have fun doing that. Um, one, so all of these are really cool, like mouth pucker. So that was on recording, it recorded the polypaint detail, it recorded the geometry detail, it saved all that in the layer, and then we're switching over to another expression, and we already know what that does. It selects that layer, it puts it in record mode so we can edit it, and then Oh, I did mouth frown. Oops, mouth pucker, sorry. Misclicked. I mean, mouth frown is also a cool one. Mm. So for example, if I go in here to path face and we do expression reference and we say, hey, you know, another good one is neck tighten. We'll look at that one. So here's me using my platysma uh, to make the neck tighten shape. You know, so that's what's happening over that. Um, here it is in uh, mouth pucker. If you want to, again, if you want to really exaggerate the shape and really flare the lips out and do something cool and stylized, you absolutely can. Just drop it down to Southern level one. Use your selection tools to go through. And again, if you're just doing poly, not doing poly paint, just turn poly paint off. It gets weird with layers. So just go through here and change your shapes as needed. And then along with those shape changes, go in here and make bespoke wrinkles like as your lips come together, you can go through, and again, we'll switch the skin shader here, and we can say, you know, damn standard, and you can go through and you can, you know, let's isolate this one here, sorry, we'll turn that off. You can go through and you can make your lip pucker wrinkle lip detail as exact as you want for your particular lips. If you have a weird wrinkle that goes across here and you got a weird knob nodule that shows up and uh, I don't know, a smiley face, that happens when you lip pucker, great. Put it in there, poly paint it up, and it will be that person's bespoke uh, lip pucker. Um, and then again, the so we've, we've made changes to that one. We'll go over here to Neck Titan. The Neck Titan by default isn't really exaggerated. I like, so it, see how it kind of just goes, it just does a little bit. Um, if I'm doing a vampire, I want it to look nasty. I want it to be gross Neck Titan, right? And luckily I have a nice gross neck for reference. So essentially, you know, just playing my video here and then having it up as reference, I can go through here, we'll turn on X symmetry and I will literally go through and say, hey, this platysma, let's turn on our Z add RGB off, colorize off. Um, we'll go through and just sculpt it. Poly, you know, obviously subject level one doesn't have a ton of information. Again, it turned on neck Titan layer and made it recordable. We'll go back up here to Southern level two, and we'll say, hey, when my neck tightens in this vampire by association, because I'm doing it, I can go through and I'm gonna make, you know, this skin, this little cord, <laughs> for lack of a better term, uh, we'll go through, let's turn, again, you can use your clay brush, just make sure your poly paint is turned off for your brushes while you're just sculpting, obviously. You can go through here and you can, you know, also remember too, don't be afraid of using your move brush. If you're getting lumpy results, just go to the side and just use your move brush to kind of pull this stuff out. Um, oh, another thing too I wanna to mention, I'm just moving these shapes around. And again, subdivision level one changes go to the shape changes. Subdivision level six is what gets baked out as detail. So if I wanna see what I wanna change with an expression selected like neck tighten, if I go in here to range, that's gonna swap out my texture map with the range map. And we'll switch back here to uh, skin shader. And uh, <laughs> it, 
it, it, I, I was I had mRGB turned on, so it did something weird. I'm just gonna have skin shader selected, M selected, just say color, fill object. There we go. So now instead of showing the, exp I mean, it still has the expression lines in there, so you can kind of keep track of those. This will show you uh, the range you're allowed to sculpt in. So what you can do is you can have this on while you're in like subdivision level three or whatever. Uh, layers do something weird. Let's say again material here and then color fill object. Um, so you can have this on while you're sculpting and you can even go in here to render fade opacity. You can fade that out. And then now you can have that range on there while you're sculpting and just have an idea of like, hey, this is where that feathered, like what you're saying, John Yu, it kind of feathers that um, section out. So this is what gets baked when those shapes drive the, those wrinkles. This is where the wrinkles will show up in the normal map. Um, also, let's say render fade opacity back to zero. You can also, instead of having a range visual indicator, you can go through here and you can say, apply mask. And you're gonna see neck tightness selected. So now it will apply a mask where your neck tighten verts wrinkles will be baked out. So you can use this as a visual indication of what you wanna do. Or if you just wanna play it safe and not have any visual indication, but have it masked for you, just go down here to mask, turn off view mask. You can sculpt, uh, let's crank this um, Z add intensity up. You can sculpt on here and it, it will just kind of stop right where that mask is, right? So all the platysma stuff you wanna do, you could even have it do this if you wanted to. Um, that'll be interesting to look at. So, but it'll stop right at that mask line, you know? So if you wanna do that, all cool stuff you can do. So again, go through here, uh, sculpt to your heart's content. And eventually what you'll have is open. So now that we know how to do that, I'm gonna skip ahead. And again, this is all stuff I did last night. It was about 90 minutes for this head and then another 90 minutes for the stylized. Actually, it's closer to two hours for the stylized head because I'm not a stylized person um, by trade. So <laughs> that took me a little bit to try to remember any best practices for that. Um, so now if I go through here and I have, um, oops, let's refresh. So everything's all caught up here. Um, and again, I'm gonna have my layers here. Nothing is selected, so I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, so this neck tighten. So here's my updated. And then if I go through here and I change the polypane and I change the, the, the sculpt, again, subdivision level one to subdivision level five, I went through and I sculpted all this detail out. I went through and I polypainted it all and I did this for every expression. Uh, again, feel free to push these shapes as hard as you want. Feel free to push these normal map shapes as hard as you want. Just remember, you can always apply a mask to keep an eye on where that normal detail is going to happen. Um, you can correct all your shapes, etc. Have fun with it. So now, if we're ready to send all this back, and again, we have character creator here, and we've updated the base, but remember it had Kevin wrinkles. Now we've got vampire wrinkles we want to send over. So let's go ahead and say update to character creator. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Expression, edit facial. Yeah, y'all got this. It's easy. Um, I know it's a lot of talking, but like once you've done this uh, a couple times, it's super easy. So base update, we don't need to do. We've already updated the base. If you've made changes to your base, turn it back on. It'll update and rebake whatever you need to. We're not gonna waste our time with that. So what did we change? We exchanged our expression morphs. This is subdivision level one shape. So brow up, those low res verts will go with it. Um, we've changed the wrinkle normal. So we've sculpted in subdivision level six detail and we'll have a new normal map for our wrinkles. We've also painted, we've poly painted our wrinkles. Um, so we're gonna send that back over too. Uh, generalized is just a way to, this is, these are bespoke. Like these wrinkles are really gonna work just best for this vampire. If you wanna make them generic, it'll, it'll you know, take your little mask and allow you, you, know, you can put it on any other character that you want. So if you have an army of vampires and you just wanna reuse these, then have these checked on. We're just gonna have this on for this guy. We've done, all of these have been updated. If you only updated one, just say deselect all and say, hey, all I did was uh, update neck tighten then just send that over. But we've done everything. 
Uh, so we'll update this to character creator. So remember back in character creator, it was vampire head, Kevin expression wrinkles. Now it's going to be vampire head with vampire expression wrinkles. Um, and again, this is the work behind the scenes under the hood, where if you were having to deconstruct left and right shapes, you were having to make sure these masks were appropriate so you don't get double translations on your base shapes, you would have to go through and manually bake out either individually for every expression or over here under wrinkle sets. Uh, remember, here's our set one. So one, two, three, four. It's actually baking. Instead of baking out every expression to a single texture, it's baking out multiple expressions to one texture and then decoupling that back to the individual shapes. Um, and then when the shapes go up, it will pull in that one, one of four textures to get that wrinkle normal where, where it should be in whatever zone it is as opposed to you know, a bunch of se uh, separate stuff. So just a kind of a, a way to combine and then separate later. Um, exporting, there's an export option over here. If you wanna export your wrinkle sets, you can have that checked on 2048, export OBJ, wrinkle sets, and also expressions. All of that you can just export as OBJs right here. Um, we're going head, we're heading back straight to character creator. It's all gonna be hooked up and beautiful and performing and ready for us to play with. But if you need to play with these individually, that's where you would export that data out as OBJs and texture files. Um, and again, this is a lot of data it's sending back. It's also baking maps. It's baking our diffuse map, our wrinkles, the little painted wrinkles we did. Um, it's baking our normal maps here. And this is the type of thing too, where it's like, I can already see it happening where I'm like, oh, it takes like three whole minutes or two whole minutes. Um, this two minutes worth of work that it's doing would take me, I don't even want to think about how long it would take me to do this manually, especially with, you know, it's a tool that someone else wrote and maybe you have to jiggle the handle a little bit or something's going to break or I have to do something, I have to do a whole process manually because the tool's on an old outdated whatever and it doesn't work appropriately or maybe they didn't write, it's, the tool wasn't written so now I have to, I can do some of it but I can't do all of it. This does all of it. It's been pretty bulletproof for me. Um, again, I've only used, this is like my third or fourth time using this. I'm not an expert. Um, so now we're updating back to character creator. All those unique wrinkles and poly paint will be updated for my vampire here. And you know what, let me get my, hold on. I do have a mocap <laughs> face capture apparatus, so I could send this to iClone and then hook up the face so that when my face moves, it'll move the vampire face as well. Uh, again, I've only done that a couple times, so I might, I'm, I'm gonna hold off for just a second, but it's totally doable. Um, and also that live link too, if it's like, well, that's great for iClone, but I wanna, I wanna have my face move and have it update in Unreal, in my Unreal scene totally doable or my blender scene or my unity scene. It's all back way back at the beginning. All those live link buttons um, exist. So here's our character now. So now if we go in here, let's go in here to uh, motion wrinkle check, dramatic mail. And everything we talked about at the very beginning too, where it's like, oh, I want to change my head morphs. You can go change your base head in here with these morphs and update your base head and all of your expression wrinkles and all of that stuff will follow. You can send that back over and it'll update your ZBrush file with your new base morphs. Because all it's doing is moving around your subdivision level one geo and your eyeball placement and your all that other like subdivision level one placement. You can absolutely hop back and forth using all of CC's tools and all of ZBrush's tools. Uh, also, in here, um, you can do morph tweaks and you can also do, uh, like we were here, we did the edit facial profile editor. You can go in and be like, oh, I just wanna grab a few verts while I'm in CC and change it, go for it. Or I wanna go Z just this expression back to ZBrush and change it, go for it. You don't have to use face tools, you can just use it, use uh, that for that expression. So all that stuff we talked about earlier is totally applicable. So here we have our updated vampire head here. And one thing I'm actually going to do is with him selected, go to scene, grab his body and switch him from original to subdivision just to give him a little subdivided uh, mesh here. So now while he's moving around and doing his thing, he's got all of his vampire goodness. Let's see him do a 
his gross platysma. There we go. So all of that stuff has been brought back over and updated. And again, make it as subtle or as crazy as you want. It's up to you. Uh, let's go back to our A pose here. And let's go in here to edit facial. And like I said, we'll do we'll do this eyebrow. Actually, we'll do an eyebrow and a sneer, and I'll turn on head movement. So while I'm doing that, you know, his, his eyebrow is moving, and his platysma is kicking in here, and then his brow down is moving. And actually, let's reset to zero and turn this off. So now if I grab his brow and his sneer and pull these down, hey, there's our, our wrinkles that we made. Uh, if we do a pucker, These are all exactly what we sculpted in and exactly what we painted, all baked in. Um, also our expressions, if we go through here and we say, hey, happy, and we wanna, yeah, ah, uh, all of this is totally changeable. We actually have eyebrows turned on for him. If I want to, I can turn off his eyebrows. Um, or I can go through and do my own eyebrows. Um, also modify, and there's also some really good content in here. Let's go to animation expression digital soul has some good stuff so it's like feel dislike scared or unhappy these are kind of like subtle little animations that we can play on our character so if i double click it and hit play you know here's our here's our pensive vampire just thinking like oh boy i don't know um <laughs> what else scared <laughs> i i'm sorry i gotta try some of these it's too cool uh, frightened, disturbed, frightened. What does a frightened vampire look like? Oh no, oh no. So this is the thing too, where if you're in ZBrush and doing characters, instead of being like, okay, let me spend hours and days doing one thing for one render, just make a whole character. Moving around, emoting. Uh, if you're like, hey, I like this face here, but I want to edit a little bit. Go in here to edit facial. You can go in here to modify. You can do little minor tweaks to here and you see as the jaw moves, the nose stretches, your um, are also, you can go in here to the muscle, double click this, grab the jaw and you can go through here and as you know these things change, they, they just update on the fly. So you can go through here and just modify these expressions, no problem, whatever you wanna do. There's even a face puppet tool in iClone that you can use uh, to go through here. So dial, and here's another thing. If you go back in here to edit facial, the facial profile editor, uh, oh, I'm sorry, um, here, facial profile editor, and then we say edit expressions. Again, you can go through here and individually go through and update each individual expression. You can also store custom expressions. So if you want to have like the animators are like, he's always going to pull this face and it involves 25 of these shapes, you can go through and change 25 or a hundred of whatever. Um, don't dock, I just wanna move here. Um, <laughs> okay, fine, dock. Um, here we have, again, and you can couple these together. So, oh, in fact, let's go, we were talking about the mouth pucker earlier. We'll say mouth blend. So mouth pucker, we can say link, and then all these four shapes are for the mouth pucker shape. You can go through and edit these shapes like we talked about at the very beginning using um, edit mesh, modify morph, Go Z proportion. Um, what was I going to talk about? Update these with morph. You can over exaggerate them. Oh, um, you can go through here and you can do again, like maybe the character does this look and then he does a, a little sexy brow raise, you know, for the left eye and then maybe his jaw opens a little bit and he's that's the that's a custom face you can go in here and click new slider and then now you have a slider for this expression as opposed to a slider for a bunch of individual expressions or linked expressions go as nuts as you want with as many expression parts into a bespoke for, um, expression that now has its own slider for all of those bits to make this face very easily and quickly totally doable um, 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 um. Okay, uh, and again, we'll go back to edit facial and we'll just say reset to zero. Whew. Everybody got that? So that's for a hyper real character. Um, let's go and let's look at another type of character. So 
to replace all. Exact same process we just went through. So I'm going to fly through this. Um, it's already 30 minutes past where I want to be on. So here is my base. Oh, and I even went through, like I said, you can add eyebrows and hair. It's all in here in the content. So if you want to add eyebrows and hair, uh, I put on some stylized brows. So again, underneath, uh, actor, hairstyle, hair element, hair accessory, hair, where is it? Oh, hair group, sorry. Hair group, eyebrows, stylized. You can Akira and Eddie. And in fact, if you want to start with a stylized character, you do have underneath character stylized. There's a couple stylized characters in here. You can also make stylized bases for your character. So for instance, let's say, again, what we did was we went in here with morph. We changed, you know, our ears and our nose and our proportions and our head size or whatever. Change your morphs to the blo block out of your character. And then we'll hit F to frame here. And then we'll go through and we'll basically just sculpt a stylized character from that base mesh. So from this, sending it over to ZBrush, and then in ZBrush, taking that base mesh, and essentially all I did, I'll just walk you through the process here, we'll alt tap. So you can update, again, the eyeballs to be a stylized eyeball if you want. I can also tell you, you can go in here to content, eye, and there's human eyes, there's stylized eyes. You can just swap out stylized eyeballs for your character. Just double click and I'll show you then. It's just a second. So, or you can paint it. Or you can start stylized, throw it over here, update it a little bit with poly paint, bake it back to your eyeballs, and you're good to go. So, how do I make this character? Um, we'll turn off colorize. We'll go to white. We'll say Mac out gray. So, oh, you know what we could do? Let's do this. I'm going to show you this stylized character, the exact same process uh, created. So, we'll say, well... I'll show you really quickly. So when you have a character face and it's brought over from character creator and it's using their you know base whatever, you'll probably have a nose, for example, sorry, that'll look more like this. You know, a nice whatever humanoid, humanish nose. And basically, for this type of stylization, there's tons of different types of stylized you can do. Um, for this particular type, uh, I just went through and made him into an Oscar statue, <laughs> essentially. So go through here and push and pull proportions. Again, we can update the base mesh. You don't have to stick with what you sent over. Exaggerate it as much as you want. Go in here with Trim Dynamic and H Polish to go through and like, you know, you can put a big old bevel, sculpt a big old bevel on the side and then go into H Polish and then polish that down. Uh, again, you don't have to be on subdivision level six. You can be on subdivision level four. Go through here with your uh, damn standard brush and you can carve in. Oops. If your brushes uh, ever start acting weird, you can go in here to brush, reset all. Um, but again, you can hold down alt and let go of alt. And also, if I hit the comma key, go into brush, orb, Google orb, what is it called? Orb pack, orb, orb brush pack. Uh, it's free on Gumroad, I believe, and there's some really nice stylized brushes in here. Um, for example, I have one that gets auto-loaded in the ZBrush called Orbs Cracks. I set that top key to Alt-X, so I can go through here, and if I want to do, you know, car carve in wrinkles. Again, this is just the base head, nothing selected. So I can just go in here and update the base head to have, you know, a wrinkle here. Or maybe I want a wrinkle here, or maybe I want a nice chiseled, you know, base wrinkles through here. Let's turn off X symmetry. You can do all of this stuff, just kind of carving in wrinkles. Um, and then for this, again, it's just like Damien Standard or Orbs Cracks. Hold down Alt to kind of pull out to a hard edge. And again, you don't have to be on something level 6. You can be on 5 or 4, whatever makes sense for what you're trying to accomplish. So you can pull out to a hard edge. You can come back in here with the clay brush or clay build up. Build up to that a little bit. Come back in here with an H polish pass. Go and just smooth this down like so hold down shift to smooth you can go in here with your pinch brush and go in and pinch this detail right along that edge um, and then once you get this all carved up you can say turn on poly paint go in here and then just big big gradient paints uh, rgb turned on rgb intensity down um you know so if you're if you're working on a character a stylized character Again, I'm not a stylized character artist, so I apologize to all the stylized character artists in the world watching me do this. Um, 
basics of stylized characters. Uh, I mean, uh, not necessarily, but you know what I mean. Some rule of thumb. Uh, you know, you have your exaggerated, at least as far as I could tell from my research, um, the exaggerated golden zone, and then the exaggerated red zone through here, and then the exaggerated, you know, cool zone where he looks like he's been shaving a lot. So go through here, drop your RGB intensity down, and, you know, just kind of dial in your zones. Um, also, everybody in stylized art looks like they uh, have allergies. So they're going to have a lot of red, you know, or blood pools. Basically, it's an enhancement of taking all the fundamentals of the human face and taking it to 11. So generally speaking, around the nose, around the mouth, uh, around the ears, you're going to have some blood and capillaries and the human face tends to have blood pool in those areas. And then, of course, when you stylize it, you take it to 11. Everybody has itchy allergy eyes and itchy allergy nose and it looks stylized, you know, because you're exaggerating those aspects of the face. So go through, do your stylized past. And again, I'm going to open back up this. So we're going to do a different type of stylized real quick. Um, I'm going to open up expressions here. And then over here, I'm also going to open up expressions here. So essentially what I'm doing is, okay, we've gone through the process of sculpting our base head. And we've gone through the process of and this is up to you too. If you're doing a stylized head and you're like, well, I don't want to send over a bunch of detailed, um, you know, detailed wrinkle maps. Remember in your content over here, you can go into expression wrinkles, actor expression wrinkles, wrinkle essentials, uh, stylized, and you can double click and change Kevin's wrinkles or the neutral base wrinkles with stylized wrinkles. So what I did was I double clicked groove that put groove wrinkles on his head. I bake those to normal maps in ZBrush. And then in ZBrush, if I go through here and I say, okay, give me a good nose sneer. It dialed in those stylized groove nose sneer wrinkles. And then I just went in and enhanced them a little bit or changed their position, a little smooth them out and change their position, did a little bit of poly paint on it. So now, so here's my nose wrinkle it looks like he's carved out of marble um you know and then with the skin shader on and the poly paint on this is what his nose wrinkle will do when he does that expression and then back in character creator when i send that back now we can go through here and do a you know what just really quickly as that loads up expression digital soul expression wrinkles there's more stuff in here Neutral, sample animation, dramatic. That's the one. Wrinkle, set to, sample animation, functional inspection, gentle mail. Yeah, there's 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 cool stuff in here. Um, talk. Let me see if there's a talk in here. Nonchalant. Talk cute. Let's do a cute talk. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that this is obviously going to be very subtle wrinkles. There's not a whole lot of movement going on. It's very subtle digital soul animations. So again, we'll do a wrinkle check, dramatic mail, make sure all our wrinkles are showing up. Stylized wrinkles on our stylized face with our stylized poly paint here. So as our wrinkles go up and his sneer goes down um, and his platysma is also stylized. So all of this has been updated. And again, this was a couple hours of sculpting last night for the base head and the base expressions. Um, and we can also, if we want to play around with this a little bit more, again, we can say reset to neutral, go through here and just test quickly, activate. Oh, check with expressions, duh. Go through here. And just like with the other stuff, I can go through and, um, oh, these are all bespoke baked. So we didn't send back generalized. Um, we can hit generalize and have access back to these, but we can change in the strength and then if you sent over generic, you would have AO redness and normal strength you could change on the fly. But here, this is just with the shape wrinkles up. Ah, now we have forehead wrinkles. So while we're doing our edit facial reset, let me see, here, here, here. You know, as we're doing this, we're doing our furrowed brow and our raised brow, all those wrinkles will kick in and we'll do a little sneer. 
maybe if I remember how. Yeah, so we could do a little sneer. Those wrinkles kick, those stylized carved in wrinkles kick in. Um, we'll do a pucker. So these are little stylized pucker mouth shape and all of that stuff you can go through and you can carve in whatever shape uh, that you want for your character. Uh, also, if we go in here to content, let's go into our clothing, others, Eddie. We got some Eddie clothing here. So we'll go ahead and throw on a stylized shirt, stylized jacket, um, pants, uh, maybe some cut gloves, cyber legs, boots. And like we were talking about earlier, if I go through here and we say uh, hair group, hair, hairstyle, hair group, hair stylized we can throw on Eddie's hair and uh, Eddie's eyebrows are already on there you can throw on realistic eyebrows if you want um, but yeah so now we've got our stylized character let's go ahead and say motion we'll do a soft physics spin around there we go we got our stylized character doing a stylized thing facial animation wrinkle sets you know rigged animated all that good stuff. Cool. Now, motion, pose, a pose. Um, let's back out of this. I'm going to do an, I'm going to do that ink test real quick. So we'll load up our expressions file. And in ZBrush, I'm just going to open up again our expressions file. And we're going to change the base head and our expression wrinkles just really quickly. Um, so we'll start down to subject level three. I'm going to have X symmetry turned on. We'll do a little bit of a softer stylize. So I'm going to go through and oh, hold down shift and then turn off RGB if you want to smooth without removing your poly paint. So we're going to soften. Again, not everything that's stylized needs to look like it's chiseled out of um, foam core. It can be a little bit of a uh, softer stylized touch. You just exaggerate the proportions a little bit like so. So I'm going to go through and again, oh shoot, let's make sure. Yeah, we have nothing selected. No sneer is actually not on. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. It's fine. It's again, nothing's broken. It just, I'm just syncing these back up. I should have hit refresh and then turn that off uh, or open up the file with that turned off. Um, so again, this is going to be a little bit of a softer, more um, naturalistic stylized face. And again, we'll send this back to character creator to update it. And let's go back up to subdivision level four and five, maybe. Again, we're just taking off some of these super hard edges and just making a little bit more naturalistic. Like so. Now, let's talk about other expressions. So we've got a little bit more of a natural face. We can go through here. I'm going to tap C, RGB, turn this off. And now if we hold down Shift and turn RGB back on for our smooth brush, we can go through here and we can kind of do very nice um, gradient painting uh, on here, RGB intensity up. So we can go through and we can, you know, some of this really chiseled stuff, we'll go through and we'll just kind of soften that that chiseled in poly paint. It's not so obvious. It's just, a, again, a little, yes, it's stylized, but it's not like Oscar statue stylized, right? Like so. Okay, so a little bit, a little bit better. And then, of course, we want to do our um, allergy, <laughs> allergy stylization, you know, oh, blood pools here. Well, let's make everybody have itchy, um, nasonex eyes. Okay. So here's our softer stylized character and that's, we've just updated the base so we can send that back over, but let's go ahead and do the wrinkles real quick. Let's go in here to brow raise. And again, it has these super chiseled, um, and it, all, all it did was set the layer to record. There it goes. Uh, it set the layer to record, uh, apply mask. You can turn on or off. Uh, we'll go ahead and apply it. And uh, we can control tap to, uh, or we can control drag to get rid of it, but that's fine. So this is gonna be where this is. I'm gonna go ahead and soften this up. And let's say, instead of, again, go to uh, RGB and we'll paint over this a little bit here. 
um, instead of it going to a super chiseled pocket or bevel or something like that, maybe we just want to go in here with our standard brush, make sure lazy mouse is turned on. RGB is up quite a bit. We'll go to black ink. So when his brow gets raised, um, he's going to get these uh, kind of ink lines here. In fact, ZBrush has, um, has pin brushes. So BP uh, pin A is RGB turned on. So you can go through here and you can actually get kind of like a nice calligraphic uh, pin stroke line. So you can go through here and you can say, like, hey, now I've got little ink lines on my character. In fact, now that I say that, I should have done this. So here's my ink lines. I'm going to go out of brow raise. So that records all of the wrinkle data and the poly paint for brow raise. Even on my base head, now that I have nothing selected, I can go through here and do that whole, um, sorry, uh, brow raise off. I undid and then it went back. So again, if I get in a bad state, nothing scary. Just go through and you can manually go into layers and turn it on and off, but I'll go through here and do it through the pose tools here. So I'm gonna go in here to brush, reset all brushes because it looked like the pin brush lost its alpha. Pin A, there it is. So now for my base head, nothing selected, I wanna go through here and do um, you know, a couple scratchy uh, pin lines, RGB. So we'll go down the side of the nose here, you know, highlight, you know, put a little pin line on the cheekbone here and down the nose or whatever, whatever, um, oh, what's it called? Into the Spider-Verse stylization lines you wanna put in here, go for it. So now we have our base head updated. Now I'm gonna go in here to I squint. So that'll always stay with, the, those lines will always stay with the face. Under I squint, now we have that layer recording. I can go through here and I can add in our um, ink lines. And again, feel free to make these wrinkles, whatever you want, the ink lines, whatever you want. Um, I guess I should turn on X symmetry, right? Just for speed. So we'll go through here and add ink lines and we'll go to mouth pucker. This time we'll turn on X symmetry just for speed. <laughs> X symmetry here. We'll go through here and we'll just toss this through. You know, put in a couple of ring, and it doesn't have to follow any things you sculpted. You can go through here and just put in multiple ring lines wherever you want to. Uh, you know what? Chin up, eye blink, jaw open. I'm going to skip. I don't think there's anything. Eh, you know what? Chin up's actually a good one. We'll put some ink line. And again, um, this pin brush, let's see, BP shadow. Let's see if this one works any better. No. When in doubt, you can also just use your standard brush with an alpha. Um, and again, just go through here and you can, you can also, all this painting I'm doing on this layer, you can say, make a new layer, paint on it, dial it up and down, be as um, gross as you want, and then move the layer up and then merge chin up with your layer you were working on. And it will transfer that untitled layer information to your chin up information. So you don't have to work in this layer if you don't want to. You can work on a separate layer or multiple separate layers, merge those all together. And then as long as that name is correct, um, it'll work just fine. So yeah, we got chin up. I'm gonna skip those. We'll do a brow drop real quick. And again, this, this line here went f was from our base texture, but now I can enhance that with some uh, lines like this. And of course you can go thick to thin and change your alphas out for this brush and you know, whatever you want to do to really fine tune these lines. No sneer. Paint, paint, paint. Uh, mouth frown is fine, neck tighten is fine. Mouse smile will change. And again, that doesn't have to be black ink lines. It can be whatever, but and you can even just, just enhance the lines you already have. So the base head lines already have kind of smile lines. You can just go in here and strengthen them a little bit. And then when the smile ends, it'll just kind of enhance those uh, smile lines. 
And again, I'm just doing this super fast and dirty, obviously. And I'm not a stylized artist. So again, don't take this as this is the pinnacle of human achievement for, um, oops, cheap phrase. Sorry. I keep changing it and then doing it and then undoing it. And then it puts me in a weird selection state. So I'm just manually going through and just making sure these things stay synced and recorded. Again, not scary, you know, don't, don't fret. There's something you can always back yourself out. And you can, I even went, the first time I went through, I did something wrong, but again, ZBrush has so many tools for like history project, morph, pro, morph now works with history project. And since we're not changing vert order, very powerful to use history. You can hold control tap your point in history and use your morph brush to morph verts back to where they should be from a completely arbitrary mesh or another saved file. Um, super powerful, super robust. One more. <laughs> and again, this isn't a difficult process. You see how simple the process is. The difficulty or the time spent is really just the fun part. Poly painting, sculpting, not the manual process of going through and doing a bunch of crazy file handling and naming and juggling. Uh, just the fun part, sculpting and poly painting. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and turn this all off. Again, back in Character Creator, we have our super hard surface. Um, what's it called? Like Oscar statue stylized. We've updated that to a softer um, ink line drawing stylization. So we're going we're gonna to say update to Character Creator. Uh, we did a little bit of the base model update. I don't think we did update the base mesh and the poly paint, so we'll go ahead and have all the stuff on. I don't think I changed anything for the teeth, tongue, or eye. Uh, wrinkles, we did. We changed the morphs a little bit. We changed the wrinkles a little bit. We changed the diffuse a little bit. We did it for all of these, so we'll go ahead and say update to character creator. So, stylized character. <laughs> Um, okay, so again, I've been skipped. I haven't been doing a whole lot of chat. I apologize, um, but I'm trying to get through a lot of content. So, um, a good academy joiner tutorials to learn sculpting. Um, kind of depends on what you want to sculpt. Like for anatomy sculpting, yeah, there's, yeah. Um, Gumroad has good anatomy stuff. CG Master Academy, I teach a CG Master Academy course for ZBrush for concept and ideation, similar to this. Um, but there's anatomy courses you can take. Uh, of course, uh, Scott Eaton has an amazing anatomy course. Um, I, I've, I've taken some of them. I need to go back through my notes and probably take the class again because when I take something, I learn something. If I don't do due diligence, and by due diligence, I mean if you want to see a, a, a peek into my madness, here's how I take notes for anything that I do. And in this case, here is all of my character creator notes. Um, and in here, I basically go through and data scrape and organize so I can quickly go through and say, okay, not only is it f notes from their documentation, but maybe it's a YouTube video they made, or maybe it's a YouTube video somebody else made. And they'll take all of that data from everybody's YouTube videos and documentation and Gumroad PDFs or tutorials that I buy, uh, collate that data and then go through and look for patterns where it's like, here's what all these various sources say about blank. And then I'll take all of that and then I can make a best practices list and organize and funnel that data into something nice and linear. Once I have it to that point in Miro, uh, I can then take that linear data and throw that into Confluence or Notion or and, and then it's a nice organized best practices checklist that we can use for onboarding or um, just having an it, really for onboarding just a nice simple or use it for an outline that for a video i want to make and do a video s tutorial series on it um but yeah so here is some most of my here's my zbrush summit stuff you know i took all of this data and funneled it down into my zbrush summit and then uh, for face tools i took my face tools data and funneled it down into this rough outline that i'm doing with y'all so um, character creator tools be using AAA game production. Or is it still too new? Do you think it will be adopted by the industry? Boy, I hope so because I would really hate to make characters. Um, <laughs> I know how difficult this is, and I know all the things they're doing underneath the hood and on the back end and the baking. Um, I've had to do that stuff manually before, 
and it is, you know, when this, what we did today was fun stuff. Go into ZBrush, sculpt, mask, poly paint. What an artistically friendly, lower barrier to entry way to have a life breathed into my character that I control. In order for me to do this from scratch in Maya and ZBrush and then set all this data up and have a to pick a topology and then deconstruct the shapes and have it line up with the body and then I update the head color color for the body and I propagate it out to the body I have to do it manually or write a script that'll do it and then how do I sample those pixels in order to do this and then like oh my god first of all I need to get a PhD in that process and then it, by the time I've done it, I could do it for one character. Well, what if I want to do it for a stylized character? What if I want to do it for another character? Am I going to write everything that does this back and forth stuff? Or is my team, is a tech art team going to do all this? Maybe if you do have a tech art team that has this all set up, great, good for you. If you don't, boy, does this do a lot of work, right? Um, so now we'll go back in here. So it's transferred all the base. So now it's a softer base, softer colors and ink lines here. Uh, we can go in here to edit facial and we can go through here in expressions and we can say happy lines come in. Um, all this stuff, uh, modify, oh, happy drop down too. You can go in here to like surprise. Oh, yeah. So a bunch of different surprises that, and again, as these things change, uh, let's go ahead and reset to zero. So as our brows go up, hey, those ink lines come in. As our nose furrows, those ink lines pop in, you know? So as our jaw moves, nothing really happens because we didn't really do that, but you know, here's those ink, those ink lines popping in where we poly painted them. In fact, now that I say all that, you can go in here to visual tab. And here is a, I haven't played with this at all. I know it exists, Toon shader, edge width, Edge intensity, silhouette edge. Okay. Texture color on or color or use your texture color. Normal threshold, so more or less lines. Don't know what that is. Oh, uh, here's here's kind of the posterized look, and you can just turn that on or off. Um, shade shadows and light i don't know why it made it super red that i'm not sure you can change the light here anyway so you can kind of have a tune shader again it, it made it kind of dark and red but anyway feel free to mess around with that um i think we're getting close to the end um Etc. Uh, Seabrush Face Tools is, was just re that's another thing too. Like literally, it was released like three days ago. I've done three characters with it in my whole life, so I'm not an expert at this. I'm just an enthusiastic young man with Zbrush in this program. Hopefully, this was helpful. But what I'm really interested in is uh, the real experts going in and just going nuts and just using the power of this to create all the cool things you can do, seeing a real professional do their thing and not me kind of ham, ham fisting with crayons <laughs> to get a result. You know, this is, um, this is the good, that, that'll be the good stuff. It's coming. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get caught up here. Um, Yes, you can bring in your own hair, by the way. Uh, you can bring in your own clothing. Um, in fact, let's let's do a really quick test. I'm probably gonna regret, I should quit while I'm ahead, but I can't help myself. Let's just try it, uh, replace all. So I have, remember, well, maybe you don't if you're just joining us. Um, over here, YouTube on this video here this uh, goblin creation here. So we, I went through and we showed, yeah, here we go. We went through and we showed how to make the body and texture it up. And then we went, I went through on this live stream and showed how to make the accessories and bring those in and apply them. Again, these real videos for these are coming. I just have to sit down and record them, but we have a live stream that kind of goes over the process just like I did this morning. Um, and if I remember correctly, I hope, if I go into content custom, 
accessory, for example, head, I can bring in that goblin helmet here and I can hit W and we can, again, that goblin head was pretty big. So I need to do a little bit of positioning with that goblin head accessory just to make sure it works appropriately. Bear with me. But the cool thing about this uh, system, because again, I made this clothing for another character um, and the earrings aren't gonna match. Well, you know what, I can, I can fix that, uh, edit mesh. Just takes me a second, I might as well do it right. So here's the goblin helmet that I made. Now, it's an accessory, so it's bound to the, um, let me see, let's grab these and say grow and say W and we'll make sure that these connect to the ear. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so now we have a goblin helmet. Let's let's go nuts. Let's go in here to, uh, we got a shirt. We'll put the goblin shirt on him. Put the goblin pants on him. Um, we'll skip the loincloth. Shoes, why not? Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna bother with the shoes because I, I think that's one more thing. I gotta make some minor adjustments to that. The heck with it, he can be shoeless. Uh, gloves, why not? Um, we can even put an ax in his hand and whatever. But anyway, now we have a new character here. Let's go back to our content stage Lightroom. Uh, oh, this is custom template. So out of our custom, since this is the stuff that comes with uh, or any packs that you've bought, we'll switch back to default CC4. So now we've got our... Uh, vampire guy all decked out. And again, we can do... He's just going to do his thing. Bum, 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 bum. Woo! Bow. Yes. I wish he would do finger guns. So now motion, pose, A pose. We can try... Let's just give it a shot. Let's go nuts. Um, let's go file, export, send to iClone. I'm going to do something under the hood real quick. Network, mocap router, 5G connect. Okay. And if this doesn't work, stop here. The, the previous three hours, <laughs> it's the useful information. This is me getting out of my comfort zone real quick because I haven't done this a whole bunch, but I think, I think it should be doable. Um, Hopefully it's not too gross because there's a lot of, okay, good, I'm connected. Um, there's a lot of parameters and stuff and things you can dial in for retargeting and um, what do they call it? Like the data, the face data that goes in, you can massage that data and, and, and increase and decrease and decouple um, and you can record mocap and then finger mocap and upper body and lower body mocap separately. Uh, you can record over facial animation. Um, it's all totally cool. But let me, you know what? Give me a moment. Also, I'm terrible at using this phone. I'm not used to using iPhones. I fucking hate iPhones. Um, I don't hate iPhones. I hate iTunes more than anything. Um, let's see here. Yep, live face and face capture. So we'll do live face. Wait for it. We'll wait for it. Now, do I remember how to do this? <laughs> I just, my brain just went blank. Uh, window, workspace, all panels. I don't need this one. Um, I think I in here I can say edit motion layer. Oh, there's face puppet. Uh, oh wait, this is if I had motion in here. So if I can record face. Damn, I should have. I, <laughs> edit motion layer. I can bring in and I can bring in animation and then I can edit that motion layer and then I can. Ah, eh, you know what? I'm not gonna get into this. It's not difficult. It's actually really easy. Smash that like and I'm saying this really late. 
So three hours in, smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, <laughs> I will have more videos on this that will go into that process. But you can see how easy it was to go from character created iClone. And then in iClone, you can do all the retargeting and uh, live facial animation and um, the body animation and data stream. Whew. All right, I'm gonna call it quits there. Um, cool. Yeah, I don't know what's up with Twitch and Restream. I, like, I really, I don't know. Um, yes, eyebrows at NCC. Cool. Um, how would you get this out of Ufi UE5? The expression lines and such. Well, you're in luck because there is a button press for that. Unreal Auto Setup. Do, 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 do. Go right into Unreal. Um, CC is a one-time thing. It's not a subscription. So you buy CC and then you have CC4 until CC5 comes out. I have not changed my streaming days. These are, this is literally like, hey, Face tools came out three days ago. I finally got enough information on brain where I felt comfortable enough to do kind of a live stream. And I went ahead and did it before I go through and do the, um, the other stuff. The difference between CC4 and Daz 3D. I don't know, I've never used Daz. Cool, cool, excellent. Thanks everybody. I'm gonna head out and um, I don't know, have fun. This is really, really fun, cool stuff. Super powerful, super easy and all of the it lowers the barrier to entry so that all the hard, difficult, um, systemic, file-saving, boring stuff is under the hood and it takes care of. And then you can spend your time just doing the fun, excellent, sculpting, bespoke, hands-on, cool stuff, right? So, anyways, excellent. Thanks, everybody. And uh, I'll catch you all later. Again, keep an eye on my YouTube channel. More, more videos will come. More in-depth step-by-step uh, -step videos are coming that'll be broken down and easily accessible. This is just a brain dump live stream, but I wanted to do it sooner rather than later so you don't have to wait a month for this information.